everyone, Sierra Games here, and today we are going to be playing some of the Infectious Madness of Dr. Decker. So, I just started up the game, and this is the beautiful screen that I am welcome to. It kind of looks like the inside of a brain, uh, kind of like black and white, sort of. Um, my detective rating is rookie right off the bat. I, I, I don't, hopefully I'll be able to get that rating up. I have no idea what this game is going to be. All I know is that it's a murder mystery. Something about like an ins maybe an insane asylum, something like that. I know for sure someone got murdered. And then I'm the psychologist slash detective trying to figure out, get to the bottom of this case. What I also know about it is its unique quality in that in this game, it is actually live action. So what do I mean by live action? What I mean is that there's actual like actors and actresses that are playing inside the game. So I can type in my own questions and they will respond as like kind of like what I'm doing right now. I'm, I'm sitting here right now in front of a screen. It's not animated. It's actual people who are acting out um, the role. So it's kind of like a movie in that sense. Uh, you'll get a better idea once I jump into it because I have seen screenshots. That's the, <laughs> that's um, I, that's the extent of my knowledge of this game is the brief screenshots. So I know that there's like a guy and there's a girl in the game. So you know, I, I feel like I'm not too too spoiled. I feel like those are a given. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna stop over explaining it. The intro right away is already concerning me because I'm very I get very scared very easily. Um, but I'm also, I love true crime. I listen to true crime podcasts all the time, which is really weird because I'm very jumpy and nervous kind of person, but I love like trying to get to the bottom of things and like the psychology of like, like the psychology of like serial killers and stuff. It's very interesting to me, even though I'm terrified. So <laughs> I'm probably gonna have lots of different responses to this game, so um, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of hesitating here, but we're just going to get right on into it here. And yes, I am so ready to glitter witch. All right. I changed the options a little bit. Background volumes halved because it is very loud when I first started it. In response volume, I kind of lowered as well because I don't want the people to be screaming at me when I, when I ask them questions. Um, let's see. Show subtitles. I'm going to say always because I enjoy being able to see what a person's saying as well as being able to hear it sepia on off no response videos right, I'm gonna keep it at standard because I don't really know what that means but let's just get right on into it I can't continue so we have to do it the faculty thing. thinks I've gone loopy like some kind of spongy Mobius strip that's why I'm here isn't it Dr. Decker I can see people's dreams I've uh, set up an experiment my dad is trying to hurt me Quantum suicide. Have you heard of it? That doesn't sound if great. If I concentrate hard <laughs> enough, and I know when the person's going to be asleep, I can have the dream with them. Well, let's call him God. He creates this world for his amusement, something he can play with and occasionally alter to suit his mood. It feels like the paintings are watching me. It is intense. Sometimes yep, it does sound intense. When I walk exactly. The door, <laughs> it takes me somewhere else. I might be a little bit quiet for the else. beginning because I have to soak it all in. But something goes wrong. Man and it's woman like a cult? What was once chaotic becomes well, more ordered. It starts as a door to door saleswoman. Double glazing, probably. Dr. Decker. I think we both know what you dreamed about last Ooh. night. She's creepy. So we're changing <laughs> through the window because he thinks I'm evil. I can see things other people can't. On the basis, the central component of our universe is chaos. Science can only document a perception of the chaos at any one given moment in time. I did what you said, Doctor. I don't really understand what's happening right now. This is just the beginning, kind of. They arrested me. Much. Which means that at any given moment, we can choose to alter the guy with glasses is just talking about like God and like no how, how much chaos men, women perceive I things. I you were chaos? supposed to fix me. I'm telling you, it's eating people. And you're just laughing. You're insane, Doctor. Who are these people talking Listen to me. Listen to me. You're not listening. It's your only bloody job. Hmm. 
Maybe that's a preview of what's to come. Ooh, heartbeats. Doctor, you're late. And after all those promises, never mind, Doctor. let's not keep the pace. You're late. And after all those Doctor. promises. You're late. Doctor, you're and after late. All those, and after all those promises, never mind. I think I'm the doctor. Act one, who are you? Or me, I don't, I'm not sure who the you that they are specifying. Doctor. You are late. late. <laughs> and after all those promises, mm, never mind. Let's not keep the patients waiting. And if are you, you might... want anything, just- Okay. Oh, sorry, I forgot. I'm not going to be here. The police still have some questions they want to ask about you know, and then after that, I'm dropping in to see Ben. He's still in shock, and I thought we'd show we cared. We do still care, don't we, Doctor? Good. She's freaking me out. Anyway, I hope you're all caught <laughs> up on Dr. Decker's tapes. Sure. I think Mariana is in first, but I'm sure they'll all become a blur by the end of the day. I'll see you later, or tomorrow. Uh, probably tomorrow. I'll leave it to you then. Is she like my secretary? Or she's the person that answers the phones? I forgot what that what that's called. She is very direct. Patients' names have dots next to them. Red, keep talking. Amber, you're done. <laughs> green, you've asked everything. Going green is optional. Watch replays in the responses tab. Look for stars. Two stars, important conversations. Green are optional conversations. Okay, so it seems like I should get two star conversations. Ooh. <laughs> Try using your patient's words. I'm all in. I'm 25 and I'm a nurse. Typing nurse will get a response. Okay. All right. That makes sense. You know, game wise, gameplay wise, you're going to want to use the same words that they're using. Include a yes or no when answering patients. Oh, yes, I like cats, not yes. Going green is intentionally hard. Hints will be required. Set hint cooldown and options. I'm a little nervous. Mariana? Oh my gosh, you're just gonna appear like that like a ghost? Type your question here or type hint. Girl, you gonna sit down? You gotta sit? I'm just gonna write. Uh, sit, sit down, please. Oh, she's already sitting. Never mind. She's gonna stare at me. Oh, she's just like waving. What's your job? I work for myself. I make bracelets from things I find on the beach and sell them online. You found that on the beach? I spend <laughs> a lot of time at the beach. Oh. It's just way more relaxing than anywhere else. You should come with me one day. I can show you all I knew the she sights. was going to be the flirty redhead. All right. I can show you all the sights. Beach. <laughs> yes, I do want to go to the beach with you. <laughs> Dang it. Oh, what's your job? That's one you can see up on the top here. What's your job? We got I work for myself. Oh, okay. We got green star. So that shows up there. That's really cool. And then we can replay her response if we want. That's amazing. Um why are you here? I think you're supposed to tell me what's wrong with me. Isn't that how it works? The police keep picking me up for public nudity. Oh, all right. <laughs> that was an important question asking why, why she's here. Okay, um, uh, public nudity, question mark? I black out. Oh. And then the next thing I remember, I'm naked on the beach. And then you find your things to make your necklaces. I'm sure. Nobody's pressed charges yet, but I can feel it. The police are getting suspicious. I'm just gonna um, ask about alcohol, maybe? I don't drink. Oh. What? Hold on. Wait, wait, what'd you say I this is the reason? Black out. You just black out straight up. I assumed I remember, it was from alcohol. Okay. Um, we're going to ask about her blackouts. I do suffer from blackouts, which is strange as I can hold my breath for a really long time. What? But 
I'm not swimming before I black Why out. Why did you mention that? <laughs> Dr. Decker thought it was anxiety originally. Anxiety, okay. Then he worked it out. And I... Am I standing in for Dr. Decker, it sounds like? Okay, let's, um, let's ask her about her anxiety. Dr. Decker thought I had generalized anxiety disorder. Okay. GAD, because of the blackouts. He thought I was breathing badly. Do you think I'm breathing badly? Oh my gosh. She'll be like, come on over here. Check if I'm breathing badly. <laughs> yeah, it's like a... Hello, sausage, by the way. Yeah, it's kind of like a, I, I, I went into this completely blind. So as far as I know, you're like stepping in for Dr. Decker and you're supposed to figure out what's wrong with these patients. I, I also think there's a murder mystery involved as well. So it's like a mystery, ask your own question sort of thing. Um, breathing? Should I ask her about her breathing? I mean, that's what she was talking about. Is that even a thing? You can check my breathing if you want. Okay. Do you want me to lie down? Can you tell just by looking at me? I'm the doctor. I'm, I'm not, not sure. worried about it. Just if you are. Uh, I don't know. I will check your breathing. I. What do I do? I'm not sure holding my breath too long is causing blackouts. I oh, mean, she doesn't think so. It could. I think that's a dead but end. I don't remember ever having a blackout when I'm holding my breath. I don't really know what the end game is quite yet yeah it's a detective game for sure your notes oh here we go let's go over our notes really quick mariana has blackouts does she remember anything sustain any injuries oh here we go here's some like uh <laughs> here's some things right right away that we can follow up on okay remember anything during blackouts By blackout, I mean, I don't really remember anything from the time I black out. Maybe we should ask her when it occurs. I'm lucky to be alive, I guess. When do you black out? Oh, okay. It's just randomly? Verbal mirroring. A new study in psychology yesterday suggests using the same words as your patient increases tr trust. Oh, okay. Yes or no when answering questions... Hmm. Oh, okay. To do. Say hello to patients, find out what's wrong with them, and see what they know about Decker. Decker. So, do we say hi to her? <laughs> We're so rude, man. Okay, I'm gonna say hi now. Don't even worry about it. Hello. I'm Mariana. <laughs> Are you feeling okay? Okay, okay. Sorry, I didn't start off with the hello. I'm an intern. Great. <laughs> That's not good. Oh, okay. <laughs> Am I feeling okay? Um... How is your relationship with Dr. Decker? Uh, we'll just say Decker. That's a bit confusing. Oh, she's picked up on relationship and Decker. Sorry, Decker. Dr. Decker was fine. He had good relationships with his patients as far as I know. I'm I don't know sure who got murdered, if anybody has. Dead. Oh, okay, so he is dead. Okay, that's the first time she's ever said anybody being dead. Okay, um, that's the first thing she knows. Okay. Hmm. Injuries. No, nothing like that. I usually wake up on my side like I've been sleeping. Sometimes I'm partially covered by seaweed. Well, that's weird. Um... Should follow this up. Oh, I can write in this as well. Interesting. Hmm, what else should I ask her? I could probably move on to different patients now. Um, yeah, let's ask if she's in a relationship, I guess. I don't know about that. Oh, okay. I guess it's not related. Um... Hmm. Yeah, and she also comes in and out like a ghost. <laughs> that definitely adds to the ominous uh, kind of vibe I'm getting here. Um, how come I can't check her breathing? We were talking about that for a little bit. Um, 
last time you saw Decker. No, it's the same as Decker itself. Okay. Um, how long have you been coming here? I don't know if that's too long of a question. I have no idea. Girl, about that. you should know about that. Did you black out when you started coming here? <laughs> Let's go. Can we go to other patients? Ooh, yes, we can. Okay. Let's start skipping around then a little bit. So, Mariana, review what we know about her. She makes necklaces out of things she finds on the beach. She also happens to black out and then she's at the beach. So, I don't know. She's like blacking out and creating necklaces? Who knows? <laughs> yeah, you type in questions you want to ask. Exactly. Uh, hello, Nathan. I don't know anything about Oops, I spelled hello wrong. Okay, don't worry about it. Hello. I'm Nathan Peel. I'm a supermarket worker from, well, hell, really. So you work at Target too? No, I'm just kidding. 20 questions. All right. Thank you for the achievement. Um... Um, how are you? It's probably gonna be saying, like, horrible. It's like those montages you get in movies. Time passes, you wake up, shave, if you feel like it, shower, get dressed. What's the point? You get this day over and over, nothing changes. Am I in purgatory, Doctor? Purgatory. Because I'm stuck between this day and the next. Most of the time, anyway. You have depression? Depression. I do suffer from depression, mm. but it's not very surprising, is it? I used to get fatigue, too. Just overwhelming. We'll ask times. about the fatigue next. I don't really get that anymore. I oh, hey, Jake. Learn to accept that this is my life now. <laughs> Groundhog Day, yep. Um, fatigue. I can't answer that. You mean you can't, do I spell fatigue wrong? Is that why you can't answer it? I do suffer from depression, but it's not very surprising, is it? I used to get fatigue, too. Just... Tiredness. Okay, let's ask about tiredness. I don't know. Sorry. Tired. I don't have anything to say about that. I'm just trying to, like, ask him about the fatigue associated with his depression. But I guess... I don't know. I guess that's not a, a thing if it's not letting me ask it. Um, obviously we need to ask. He sounds like a fun guy. <laughs> yeah, he does. Um, let's just ask him more about work, I guess. I'm not really fit for work anymore. I work in produce at the local supermarket. Maybe we could ask him about that the mainly supermarket. mainly involves lifting heavy crates of fruit and veg into place for people to buy and doing that over and over again. My muscles don't seem to have grown much. I think that maybe I'm not aging. When the day resets, I just reset with it. I used to be a builder. Okay. Builder? I used to be a builder. Contractor. I had to quit. It's hard watching a house get built and just to start all over again the next day. Oh, it does sound like he's obvious. literally stuck in the same day, or at least he thinks he is. <laughs> Groundhog day? Um. I watched that Bill Murray film, Groundhog Day. There you go. To see if there's any clues. To see if there's any clues. That's how bad it's gotten. I'm looking for a cure in a Hollywood movie. Can you help me, Doctor? Okay, let's more ask more about Groundhog Day. No, okay. So it's the same as reliving the same day. That's a, that was a really good question to ask. Um, reliving the same day. What could we ask him in regards to that? Um, when did this start? Sorry, got nothing. Can I just say start? No, sorry. <laughs> no, no, I can't. I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, yeah, ideally I would want to ask, to ask him like when this all started. Um, let's just go straight to the meat of it. Ask him what he knows about Decker. Dr. Decker was a complex man. I spent a lot of time with him. He won't remember it that way. Complex. I saw the conflict that Dr. Decker was going through. 
let's just say you might look back on your life and think there's nothing you would have done differently. No two days were alike for him in the end. Like he couldn't decide what to do with himself. Indecisive. What? Oh, okay. Hmm. He couldn't decide what to do with himself. Interesting. Oh, hey, Sukadia. Oh, he asked if you could help him. Maybe try answering yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know. It is a party in here. We're all, like, detectives up in here. Um, yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, next time he asks. Um, hmm. I don't know if that was an actual question, though. It's just kind of, like, in general. Can you help me? Um, what are some other questions we might want to ask him? Supermarket. Um, I mean, we can ask him more about his job. Yeah, that's the same as work. Hmm. Works at the soap supermarket. Suffers from depression. Very tired all the time. He says to Decker, he spent lots of days with Decker because he thinks he's reliving the same day over and over again. Same day? No, reliving the same day. Um, he says Decker had a lot. On his plate or something. What it, exactly did he say about... I saw the Do conflict Decker. with Dr. Decker. Conflict, okay. Conflict with Decker. He was like a kid in a sweet shop. He had so many options. He didn't know what to do. That's a weird thing to say about I suppose about if you take too long picking, all your options run away. Options. I don't have an answer to that question. As always. Hmm. He was like a kid in a sweet shop. He had so many options. He didn't know what to do. I want to ask him, like, what what do you mean by options? Decker's options. You asked me that yesterday. I didn't have an answer for you then either. Hmm. Is there anything else you want to say about Decker? No, same thing. Okay, let's try it. Oh wait, do you know anything about the other patients? No. Sorry. Okay. You asked me that yesterday. I didn't have an answer for okay. you then either. Hmm. Oh, sweet shop. Good idea, good idea. I don't have an answer to that question, as always. All right, let's go to somebody else. Ellen. She's gonna freak me out when she randomly appears. Hello. I'm Elin. I'm 25. Elin, I'm sorry. Nice. God, I sound like I'm on one of those dating shows. <laughs> she seems fun. I work in a nursing home for the elderly. Elin. I basically do end of life care. Aw, that's nice. How, how is it working with the elderly? You don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> You're not sure. You're not sure what I'm talking about. Um, okay. Why are, why are you here? I started seeing Dr. Decker a few months ago. I thought it would be nice to have someone I could talk to about work. It can get a bit stressful sometimes. Okay, well that makes sense. I feel really bad I can't answer your questions. Um, I like animals. Let's talk about that. Uh, let's not. <laughs> Stress. It can be sad sometimes. <laughs> I don't like losing a patient, but that's the job. I didn't get stressed about it or anything. Hmm. Yeah, the point of the game is Dr. Decker is dead, so I have to figure out how he... died. Sorry for writing your notes. Say hello to Elin for me and let her know that Terry called for her. Jaya. Oh my gosh, that scared the heck out of me. Is Jaya my <laughs> secretary? <laughs> I'm like, who wrote in it? Okay. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, yeah. Because it's like a, like, I don't know. But she finds, Mariana finds her necklaces, like, on the beach, right? Let's see if she knows her. I haven't her. really got anything to say about that. Maybe we should talk about you. Why you, why does she always say that? I'm really bad at this, aren't I? <laughs> me? Ask me something else. Okay. Um. Say hi, hi to, 
know that Terry. Okay, let's mention Terry. Terry's one of the other nurses at the home. Oh. I don't think she likes me very much. Okay, Terry called for you. No? Okay. Just like a random note. Let her know that Terry called for her. Jaya. No. Sorry. Oh, okay. You don't know my secretary? Okay, animals. I love animals. <laughs> Especially cats. I know she wants to talk about I that. I think everyone so. is either a cat person or a dog person. What are you, doctor? Yay, me cat too. Cat person. I have a cat called Church. Aww. He's adorable. <laughs> Church. I don't know anything about that. What do you mean you don't know anything about your cat? Cat church. Um, your cat named church. I want you to tell me more about your cat. <laughs> that ended. That ended very abruptly. Okay, I thought I was going getting somewhere with you. Um, I'd really like to be able elders. to answer you, but I don't know what to say. So you're just here because you work in an elderly home. I guess I'll ask if people die. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I'm the weakest link or something. Aww. Um, what does that ask about Jack? I've known a lot of doctors over the years. Most of them arrogant idiots who think nurses are just there to do their bidding or worse. Hmm. Dr. Decker was different. He had a lot of time for me. He was interested in my problems. Problems? Okay. Um. Interested in his problems. What do you think happened to Do to Decker? I don't know. Yeah, that's not quite it. Hmm. I want to ask more about Decker, but every time I ask questions relating to Decker, it just goes back to the question I've already asked or the the one word. Um. I like your necklace. <laughs> No, no, sorry. sorry. You don't, don't you don't know about the necklace. All right, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, your problem. Yeah, why are you here? Yeah, she just said she worked in like a nursing home. The usual things: making sure oh, here we go. The patients are comfortable, making sure they're not in any pain, and I talk to them. I keep them company. Some That's of them nice. get pretty frightened about what's coming. Well, those of them that aren't out of it on meds. I comfort them. Well, that's nice. That comfort? is frightening, isn't it? Oh. Isn't it what Zooming everyone's on afraid her. of? The great unknown. No one should have to face that alone. Hmm. You hate playing the game yourself. Yep, that that's what I'm here for. Don't you worry. I will ask all of the questions. Um, there's a question we asked her. Why are you here that we didn't ask Mariana, I think. Let me see. No, we already asked her that. I thought I missed somebody asking, why are you here? How are you? Oh. He's not doing great. Alright, let's talk to Claire. Oh. <laughs> okay. Hello. My name is Claire Castleford, and as I'm paying a small fortune for these sessions, I'd expect you to be up to speed, Doctor. Oh. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, I was so offended by you that I had no idea My what you said. My name is decide. Claire Castleford, and as I'm paying a small... Are you rich? You're rich. Being rich has its perks, but honestly... <laughs> I would give it all up in a heartbeat if it could free me from this madness. So she's rich and something about madness. I'm in a bit of a predicament, Doctor. I'll get to that. I don't want to force it out of you. Well, you according to your predecessor, I'm a delusional psychotic with obsessive tendencies. Oh, and a history of violence. <laughs> Sounds so cold when you put it like that, though, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, gosh. Psychotic? There's there's a lot to go into already. I don't know. Oh. Sorry. Psycho? I, I don't I don't know. I want to go I don't into have that. An to that. Psychotic tendencies? Should I type in the whole thing? Psychotic tendencies. Sorry, doctor, I can't answer that. 
I don't know anything about it. Oh, okay. All right, that's fine, girl. Okay, you're gonna have to sit a little bit further back. Can you please use the couch that I've provided you? To be fair, there was only Thank one you. violent outburst that hardly qualifies as a history of violence. Oh. And he provoked me. I don't have anything to say about Dang that. It. Who provoked you? It was a brief moment of temporary insanity. Or temporary clarity, I'm not really sure which. David had been having an affair with his assistant optician, Iris. David and Iris, got it. How predictable. Not just the affair, but an optician named Iris. That's pretty whack. Um, is David your husband? Keep up, Doctor. Yeah. David is my husband. I'm not saying I didn't know. Okay, let's talk about Iris. Iris was David's assistant optician. So he's an not optician. Anymore. No, not like that. I didn't kill her or anything. <laughs> it's just that I changed the optician into a florist after David died. Optometry was his dream, not mine. Oh, David died. Optometry. Sorry. I don't know. How did David die? I can't ask how he died? Hmm. Okay. So, she's rich. She fought with Iris after David had an affair with her. Oh, she's a, fl she's a florist now. If I knew anything about that, I'd tell you. Oh, I thought I you don't. told me that you were a florist. Didn't you? Keep up, Doctor. Hmm. Iris was David's assistant optician. Not anymore. Hmm. Maybe he just died. Yeah. Let me take off this jacket. I was trying to look fancy, but whatever. <laughs> um, I guess, why are you here? Ah, oh, well, we already talked about it, apparently. Well, according to your predecessor, I'm oh. a delusional, psychotic with obsessive. Delusional and obsessive, got it. Delusions. As in, seeing things that are not there. I'm not gonna be any more specific. It's not true in any case. I'm not delusional. Are you in denial? I'm going to have to plead ignorance on that one. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, obsessive. I'm obsessed with my husband. It's absurd, really. Hmm. How are you obsessed with your husband? Like, what does she mean by that? Hmm. Love, I guess. No, that doesn't mean anything to me. Oh, of course. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, she's she keeps walking straight up to the camera. She's got to stop doing that. It's really freaking me out. Um, I guess what else could we ask her? There's like some questions. Oh, why is it absurd? Is and he shouldn't be. Oh. Oh, that's awkward. Oh, there's it's a bunch of questions alive. here. He almost died. Almost died? Question mark. My husband is not a well man. Oh, he's not dead. We've been having problems for a while now. Oh. Century. Problems? I should have divorced him. I wish I had. So much could have been avoided. Divorce is such an imperfect means of separating two people, don't you it's think? It's probably because of, of Iris, I right? I don't really mean it. I thought he was my soulmate and that I would do anything for him. That's a weakness that has caused me problems. I don't know anything about that, Doctor. His health, if you can call it that, has been deteriorating rapidly in the last few weeks. I can't cope with caring for him anymore. Hmm. His health deteriorating. Deteriorating? I want to ask about that. How has his health so, so, deteriorated? 
There we go. Altercation. <laughs> He's become less and less active. His mind's become less and less active too. Such a delightful conversationalist at one time. Now more of an enigmatic husk. Hmm. I can't believe there's a... Um... There's pre-made questions. Ugh, I had no idea. Is that like easy mode or something? Or are these like the hints? David has That's trouble fine. looking after himself. Sometimes I'll leave the lake house and he's just sitting in the rocking chair on the porch. And when I return the next evening, he's still there, just staring into the stars. He needs help, I know, but I can't hire anybody to care for him. Why can't you... Why can't you hire anyone to take care of him? David's not ready for company. Oh. I hope to take you to see him one day and you'll see for yourself. Company? What's the lake David's house? David's staying at the lake house. It belonged to my parents, but I don't use it much anymore. I have the main house to myself. Yeah, I do agree. It's, it is pretty fascinating. What do you mean by altercation? I tried to hurt David once. After That's Iris, right? Here, isn't it? Probably. I'm not proud of my behavior, but I was very angry. It was and a private matter, sense. though. The police should never have been involved. Oh. Tell me about I the violent outburst. Stabbed him with a steak knife. Oh my gosh! It's shocking, isn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know what I thought. I thought maybe he like she pushed her him or punched him. I didn't actually think she like stabbed him, but I guess it makes sense that he's uh, she's here now. I never used to get angry, ever. Now she's very angry. If you're angry, you're not in control. Isn't that right? And it would be very bad for me to lose control. Did you murder Dr. Decker? <laughs> well, it's bad Let's to lose save control. that for another time, shall we? I'm rich, but I'm not made of money. And I'm fairly sure my time is up. Okay, okay, sorry. I won't pry. <laughs> OMG, indeed. She's a little crazy, but don't worry. Dr. Sear is on the case. The most shocking thing about Dr. Decker's death is that it didn't bring it upon himself. But then I hadn't known him for a very long time. Perhaps I was wrong about him. Wait, wrong? Wrong about him? I don't know. I'm trying Sorry. to put my own questions in, but whatever. I'll, I'll take these questions. Why were the police The police seem to think I'm dangerous. I'm only sitting here talking to you because I have a lot of money. Otherwise, there's no doubt I'd be thrown into prison for a very long time. That's why I need your help, Doctor. Why do the police think you're dangerous? I assume they think I'm dangerous because I stabbed my husband. <laughs> That's me, Doctor Obvious. Uh, why aren't you in I prison? I suppose that's what rich? I did. There are people that might think I belonged in prison. Yeah. What do you think, Doctor? Can I be saved with therapy, or should I be locked up like a dangerous criminal? Um, saved in therapy. You have a lot of faith in your abilities. Yeah, That's I do. <laughs> I look forward to being completely cured. Yeah, no problem. You're gonna be less crazy by the time you're done talking to me. Dr. Decker just had that look about him. You know what they say about us crazies. It takes one to know one. Perhaps you should ask someone else a question. <laughs> no game. <laughs> um, crazies? I don't. Is there any other questions? Who's to say who is sane oh. or insane? That's cool. We all see the world differently, don't we? Okay, maybe we should go back to the other people before we go on to Bryce. So Ellen, you mentioned dating. I'm not really looking for love at the moment. I'm sort of married to my work. But in a good way. Aww. Why are some patients out of it on meds? I don't like it when patients are heavily sedated. Especially when there are alternatives, like herbal remedies. Well, we don't force I mean, it on them. Imagine if you only had a few days or weeks left to live. Would you want to spend it asleep? Is she here because... Oh, here we go. Yes, I'd like to sleep through it. Or no, I wouldn't like to sleep through it. I mean, it, it depends on how much pain I'm in. Supposedly, I'm in a lot of pain. No, no, I guess not. Exactly. 
I feel like it's almost criminal. Mm. Like you're robbing people of their last moments on Earth. Feel like you this be would be extreme real quick. Experience. Not sleep your way to death. Savor it. <laughs> that's that's a bit of a weird way to say it, but whatever. Uh, why should people savor dying? There we go. I'm not saying anyone should be happy about dying. I don't know, girl. I've seen lots of people <laughs> die, and it's a special moment. There's literally nothing else like it. Hmm. Okay, I think I know why you're here now. <laughs> okay. I'm a qualified herbalist. Let's talk about herbalist. something else. It's okay, you can laugh. Most people think herbalism is a joke. But I'd much rather help my patients sleep at night with valerian or passion flower than lorazepam, tamazepam, or zolpidem. <laughs> She's a killer. She did it. <laughs> And not that lady that stabbed her husband. That'd be too obvious, wouldn't it? Are you lying about being stressed? It's not the job that stresses me. It's the people I work with. The other nurses. <gasps> the other nurses? They're mean to me. Oh, no. The other nurses are mean to you? No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do that. They call me the angel of death. Because um. so many patients have died on my shift. I don't think they mean it. Obviously, sure it's not that's my not fault. True? It just seems to happen that way. Are you killing your patients? Okay, angel of death first off. They're old. People die when they're old. I mean, <laughs> I'm just going to straight up ask, do you kill your patients? Heart failure or organ failure I mean, or pneumonia. Hmm. They're all natural causes, though. Just got to get the extremes out of the way here. gonna get so mad if it does work no it doesn't okay um how many patients have died in your mm, shift three last month three the month before that i think but only one so far this month so that's good although one of my patients hilda i don't think she's got long no this is not the one who uh this person's not the one who has the blackouts mariana has the blackouts um Eileen, I think that's how you pronounce her name. She's just the nurse. That sounds like she appreciates people dying. <laughs> yeah, more and more scared of her as we ask more questions. She's one of the crotchety ones. Oh. Always swearing and spitting at me. Oh. Never got anything nice to say. Thinks we're going to smother her in her sleep or something. She doesn't bother me, though. mother? No. Okay. This is an angel of death. Did you like Decker? He was a bit offbeat, but yeah, I liked him. But then, I like most people. Hmm. How long have you been seeing Dr. Decker? Uh, I've been seeing him for about nine months, I think. Okay. What do you know about Dr. Decker's murder? I think it's terrible what happened to him. So awful. No one deserves to die like that. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Okay, Mariana is the one who has the blackouts. Do you know... Yes, I'm feeling okay. No, I'm not feeling okay. I'm feeling okay. That's what Dr. Decker would say. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, do you know anything about the murder? Well, that's why you're here, isn't it? You've replaced him. He was a good listener. I hope you are. Why was he a good listener? Dr. Decker could really get inside you. It was, uh unsettling but you let him do it part of the process i guess hmm wish i could ask more about that um i don't know like the process i don't have an answer hmm. for that i mean the innuendo is the obvious thing right <laughs> but like what is she like really deep questions or Interesting. What are you doing before you black I out? I normally black out when I'm dancing. 
I like dancing. Do you like dancing? <laughs> no. <laughs> dancing is good for you in so many oh, ways. Oh no, Just she's gonna try to make me turn dance. Turn the music up, close your eyes, and let yourself go. I'm gonna apparently black out as well. You try sometime. Dancing. Hmm. Where do you dance? I dance a lot at nightclubs. I know most of the nightclubs around here. My favorite is the Pearl because they sell cheap vodka shots all night. I think you didn't drink the alcohol. Wait. Am I going crazy? I don't drink. You're such a liar! Oh my gosh. <laughs> you're, you're a dirty liar. You do drink because they sell cheap vodka shots. Jerk. Okay, um, <laughs> don't worry. She just likes to go to the place where her, she, she likes to go to nightclubs where there's cheap vodka shots, but don't worry, guys, she does not drink the vodka shots. She just likes, she just likes, uh, the fact that it's cheap there. Liar! That doesn't mean anything to you. Yeah, I'm sure it doesn't. All right, let's just carry on now, because <laughs> I know you're drinking, but you're just lying to me. Your, your blackouts are probably caused from you drinking, but you just don't want to admit it. He eventually decided it wasn't anxiety, but I'm not going to tell you his final diagnosis. We should have a fresh start. I don't want you influenced by the prognosis. <laughs> this, she's my least favorite character. She's, oh, she's so uncooperative. <laughs> Why? Why wouldn't you tell me? Maybe dancing causes your blackouts. You think blackouts. my dancing sure. causes my blackouts? No, I know it's, it's every the last time. I remember, but I don't think it's that. Sometimes I remember more, but I'm tired now. <laughs> Is that it for today? No. <laughs> I have millions of other questions. What prognosis are you looking for? I want to stop having the blackouts. I want to stop waking up at the beach. Hold on, I got a, I got an idea. I stop remember drinking. Those entire evenings. Can you suggest anything that might help? Stop dancing? Stop drinking. Yes, the miracle cure that fixes all problems. I'm just telling you. You sound like a real doctor now. So you do drink. <laughs> oh, that question bothers me so much. Okay, have you ever tried to film your blackouts? I film myself doing, um... Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Lots of things. But it's not so easy to do when you're blacked out. Well, why don't you go find a friend and have them film you while you black out? I don't know. Can someone watch you? Yeah. Can you do it for me? Can you watch me to see what so happens? Creepy. I don't... It doesn't sound like it's caused for me. <laughs> yes, I'll watch you. No, I can't watch you. No, you weirdo. Well, that's not very supportive, doctor. Oh. <laughs> I get paid so you can sit on this couch and tell me things. I'm not... <laughs> gonna see if you can black out. Are you flirting with me? <laughs> yeah, I'm wow. asking that. Let's get straight to it then. Just I'm not sure I doctors? feel comfortable speaking with you about that at the moment. Alright. Why do you think people will press charges? I guess people see me and call the police. Oh, about the nudity? That someone will take offense eventually, and I'll be charged with indecent exposure. Hmm. Do you ever find your clothes after you black out? I never find my clothes. That's weird. I don't know why I'm naked. She just never finds her clothes either? Is your hair wet when you when wake up? When I wake up? up, my hair is dry, but it's pretty hot at the moment. I get baked quickly by the sun. It's possible I've been in the sea during my blackout. I don't think so. Girl, I think you, if you were blacked out and you were in the ocean, you definitely wouldn't be alive back on shore. Why do you hold your breath so much? I hold my breath when I'm swimming underwater. Most people do. Sometimes, if I'm really excited, I'll hold my breath accidentally. Just for a few seconds. I don't know why. Maybe that could be related? Something about, like, when you dance? You're excited and you just end up holding your breath and you black out? But then why would you be at the beach after? Hmm. 
I mean, that's the most logical thing I can think of right now. How long have you been a patient? I've been a patient here for three months. Today is my patient birthday. Do I get a cake or something? <laughs> yeah, I just say yes. Yes, you can have a cake. That is so sweet. <laughs> Thank you, doctor. <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, why do you keep going to the beach? I love the beach. Until somebody tells me it's going to kill me, I'll keep going. Have you ever been addicted to something, doctor? I'm going to say yes so I can be more relatable. I thought so when I first saw you. We should get on great. You're addicted to the beach? That doesn't sound that bad. Um, how does this all make you like feel? Like you're not listening. Wow, rude. Okay, I mean, addiction. I guess it's just gonna t tell no. me about the beach again. Don't know. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you're, you're eh. <laughs> She's eh. I like, I like Eileen a lot. Eileen's pretty cool. Um, okay, Nathan. Why wouldn't Decker? Yes, I'll try to help you. I don't you. know how, but thank you, Doctor. This. This is our first time around, and I trust you. Aw, good. House officer. Alright, I'm, I'm gonna ask you another question. Calm down. Uh, why does nothing change? Sometimes it looks different. Sometimes the bird song will change, or, or the weather will be less bleak. Or, the, or that person who nodded at you yesterday doesn't, doesn't do it today. But it doesn't usually change. You need a tragic event for change. Like a murder. Hmm. What tragic event? I didn't see the driver. It was my fault. I pulled out and the lorry just rammed me. Well, Hannah. She was sat next to me. Hannah. I was in shock, obviously. And when I came to, she was so close to me. It's like she was trying to hug me. But it wasn't right. So you got in a car Not crash actually. with Hannah? It's a mess. Might be your through. girlfriend? That was five years ago. Oh man. Five years ago. Okay, uh, who is Hannah? My fiance. Mm. My childhood sweetheart. Yep, I knew it was like we met a girlfriend secondary school. or something. She was head girl. I was the quiet one. She liked computer games, so I instantly fell for her. I proposed in Goldshire. Good trait, Shire. good trait. <laughs> she said she didn't date elves, so I leveled up to a human necromancer and asked again. That's awesome. Sorry, it's Warcraft. We spent a lot of time on there. Aww. We played World of Warcraft a lot together. I guess it's not the cool thing to do anymore. But I think it's cool, We had man. a lot of memories there. To be honest, it reminds me a lot of life now. The same thing over and over again. Bring me X bunnies to make a stew. Y badger teeth. Rinse, repeat. Hmm. Maybe I'm just grinding life. I like this guy, right? <laughs> oh, you're playing WoW right now? That's awesome. <laughs> um, five years is a long time ago. I was fine for quite ago. a while after the accident. Well, being treated for depression. Okay. I thought I was cured. It was only recently after meeting Dr. Decker that I had a strange deja vu. Weird. I'm exhausted. Doctor, is our time up? So it sounds like... Are you Hannah? <laughs> yeah, minus the car crash part. Um, so it sounds like his his thing where he feels like the same days repeating, it seems like... It started happening when he saw a Dr. Decker. Are you here because of an accident? I've been shrunk for that already. If I had that day again, I wouldn't make the same mistake. Hannah would still be alive. We'd probably have a family by now. Mm, that's so heartbreaking. I haven't had any relationships since then. Oh, I like this guy. I like Nathan. He's, he's relatable. Plays video games. Works at the supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> Very relatable to me. Um, why couldn't why wouldn't Decker remember? As far it that as Dr. Way? Decker was concerned, 
We had Monday, then moved on to Tuesday. But me, I had Monday yeah. five, ten, think the same fifty times repeating. before I got to Tuesday. What do you know about the murder? Dr. Decker's murder was sudden. Brutal. It's terrible. The Ooh. doctor. Okay. Two weeks. Two weeks I had of rolling days. No do-overs. No Monday, Monday, Monday. I wouldn't kill anyone, though. I'd have to keep doing it, wouldn't I? A few things seem to move me forward. Can you go back and save Hannah? That's kind of insensitive, but uh, we're going to say it. No, I can't move backwards any more than a day. Oh, okay. I don't really seem to control it. It's generally always on. I have to try and change something to move forward. I mean, he would have a good reason to kill Decker, right? If he was stuck in the same day and he feels like Decker's the reason he's stuck in the same day, he might go crazy enough to actually kill Decker so he could keep going into, like, you know, the future. Most of my days are blur. I'm not sure if it's the sleeping tablets I'm on or just how I've learned oh, to switch on. sleeping tablets? I'm on Tamazepam. Dr. Decker prescribed them for me. He thought I'd sleep through to a whole new day. Mm. I didn't. I don't know. Sorry. Tamazepan. 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 I don't know. Oh. Sorry. She's the one who mentioned that drug, so I thought maybe she would say something about it a little bit more. Is that how you spell it? Perhaps Mariana should stop going to the beach or have someone record her, watch her record her. Oh, okay, I already asked her how it makes her feel. Okay. Any more questions for Nathan? You don't think you're I'm aging? 57. Kidding. Just, if you spent the whole day at the gym, and then repeat that day and not go, you'd have achieved nothing. Hmm. Oh, yeah, she's like, I don't know what that drug is. <laughs> I'm trying to make connections here, but perhaps you should ask someone else a question. All right, let's meet Bryce. Hello. I'm Bryce Hemmings. You must be the new doctor. Did you know Dr. Decker? Did I know him? No. He was an antagonistic psycho. I hope you're not from the same school of thought. Oh, gosh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to hear that, man. What do you think of Decker? An antagonistic psycho. I didn't really like Dr. Yeah, Decker. Yeah, I figured. And for quite a few <laughs> reasons, actually. I'd oh. rather talk about my own problems for now, though, if you don't mind. Okay. What are your problems? Originally, I was suffering with depression. Work was piling up. I, I kept missing deadlines. Okay. I wasn't used to all the failure. I got depressed. He seems very... Not twitchy. Just very, like, on his feet all the time. Always having to move. Apparently I've gone a little mad. For me, I have 25 hour days. Huh. 25 hour days? Question mark? At midnight each day. Time as you know it freezes. In my world it just slows down to almost a stop. But I don't. I'm free to wander around and do as I please. An hour later, normal reality continues. It's my very own midnight hour. Huh. <laughs> you don't seem nervous at all. Yeah, exactly, Sausage. He doesn't seem nervous at all. Um, okay, midnight hour? It's a hour? bizarre thing to know you have an extra hour every day. I rarely ever sleep until after midnight now, so I can appreciate the extra time. I get a lot of work done in oh, that time. Oh, here we go. I was going to ask I'm what he does. I'm completely caught up. The depression is no longer an issue. Do you not sleep? 25 hours is a blessing It sounds like maybe me. he doesn't sleep, right? That would be but a reason why it's it not real, down. And I'm insane for thinking it is. 
What do you think, Doctor? Um... Is there an option where I can't give you a diagnosis yet? Oh, okay. I don't think you're insane. I can't give a diagnosis yet. Okay. Um, let's ask him about some other things. I mean, if we say I don't think you're insane, maybe he'll tell us a little bit more. So let's just do that. I thought it would be too early to make a diagnosis. But it's good you're having a go anyway. <laughs> I tried to tell you that, but you wouldn't hear me, so whatever. Okay, why didn't you like Decker? Dr. Decker would say one thing and do another. He would push me to do things I didn't want to do. He's he hyped up on monsters, yep. I'm surprised <laughs> he didn't kill himself. He got worse towards the end. Wait, why? Why was Decker... I hope this comes up with something. I have no knowledge of that. Oh, okay, well. <laughs> Alright. What do you do in the extra hour? In the hour? extra hour, catch I mainly up catch up with work. Yeah. It's a godsend. Sometimes I play chess against myself. It relaxes and strengthens the mind all at once. You drinking some coffee, man? You should... <laughs> Caffeine. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, do you sleep well? Can I ask that? No, sorry. Just like sleep? That's meaningless to me. Dang it, I thought that was gonna be an answer. Hmm. It's weird that talking to him about sleep doesn't pop up any answers, because that's my immediate thought when I when I see him. Um, why were you depressed? You'd think being a gravedigger had its perks, Ooh. but it can be very stressful. Gravedigger? There's a trend going towards burial rather than cremation again. And as well as running out of space, we're running out of competent gravediggers. At least ones that can use a shovel, that is. I'm not so feeling anywhere near as depressed as I used to, though. Not since I got the extra hour. Also, if you're a gravedigger, how do you catch up on your work? Do you just dig for an extra hour every night? Gravedigger. I'm a gravedigger, Doctor. And people are dying quicker than we can bury them. Hmm. I don't have anything for you. Uh, people are dying quickly? Why does he say that? I can't help you there. Okay. Hmm. Why is it hard to find someone who could use a shovel? Henley Church, where I work, is located on an old Norman Mott and Bailey. Henley Church. You can't use mechanical diggers or excavators there in case you destroy a relic. Henley Church is relatively small. We will look up relic well, after. The number of bodies they expect us to pack into the ground is relatively small. The whole building was once owned by Scientologists but they handed it back to the community as a tax break, I believe. Or they'd finished doing whatever it was they wanted to do with it. I stumbled across a relic Ooh, myself. Ooh, that's exciting. An ancient chess piece. When you play chess with yourself, the I The best chess piece. The most freedom of movement. Hmm. But they took it away immediately and proclaimed the whole east side of Henley Church a protected site of archaeological importance which means we're not allowed to use it until the archaeologists have finished. I wish I hadn't told anyone. Scientology. I'm not sure I believe in any religion anymore. I used to believe in God, but not anymore. There are too many religions to pick from, don't you think? Uh, sure. Then we agree. Have you watched Zeitgeist, Doctor? Some of it is believable, and the part about most religions stemming from the same basic facts. It's more likely they've all got it wrong, than one of them has got it right. Huh. Um, <laughs> do you like chess? We're just talking about religion, but uh, do you like chess? I like chess. It strengthens I still your brain, as when he I would can say. Find an opponent. There's nothing more satisfying than planning scores of moves in advance and then Against watching things unfold as you saw them. I shouldn't have told anyone about the queen. Yeah, the relic. Okay, and then that's where I could have talked about the relic as well. 
Um, why do you like planning moves I in advance? I do like to be in control, but then I suppose most people do. Nobody wants life to carry them along helplessly. Everyone wants to kick against it and make their own way. Do you like to be in control, Doctor? Um, yeah? If you like being in control, you'll have a tough time here. Oh, I saw thanks it with for Dr. the warning. Decker. Such control, such stability. But he unraveled at the end. Taking pictures of me? Wait, 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 wait. Photography? I've taken a lot of pictures. Hey, I, I got a clue from that. All Sweet. The sites. It's amazing what exposure you can use when moving cars are literally frozen still. Must be the sharp focus. Oh, okay. So you take photographs during your little, like, midnight hour. Got it. Um, how did he unravel? He couldn't keep control of everything, of everyone. He just set us up like dominoes, but we all toppled in unexpected so ways. So you know about the other patients then, right? You'll find it all out in time, Doctor. Just not today. <laughs> Can't have your head exploding, can we? This character is interesting. I like him. Uh, do you know anything about Decker's murder? Yes. Dr. Decker was murdered. Kel surprise. Murder does seem a bit harsh, doesn't it? And another grave to dig. I know as much about it as you do. Less, I would imagine. Hmm. Oh, we can continue so we can go to the next day if we wanted to. Um, do you know about the other patients, perhaps? Is that something I should know about? Um... Let's ask about other patients. Sorry, I don't know anything about that. Um, what else? What else? It looked like he was drinking coffee. That doesn't mean anything to me. Okay. Because orange means we ask them all this, the important questions, and then green means we ask them all the available questions, which sounds like a lot. <laughs> um, or this is supposed to be yellow, apparently. Um, Claire. She stabbed her husband. Hmm. Ellen. Oh, Aline, sorry. Aline. She's a nurse. She takes care of people. Um. Ariana. I never asked her about her necklace. No, I don't know about that. <laughs> that was a long pause. Um, okay. I think we're gonna go the next day. I'll be right back, though. I have to go to the restroom. Be back in one minute, you guys. Alright, I am back. <laughs> Give Mariana's phone number for you. Oh yeah, before tomorrow, totally. <laughs> Don't worry, I got you. Phone number? That's not really helping with my blackouts. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Ellen, death and alone. Okay, we can try that. I'd really like to be able to answer you, but I don't know what to say. Okay, she doesn't say anything with death alone. I haven't really got anything to say about that. Maybe we should talk about you. Oh my gosh, why do you want to talk about me? No, sorry. <laughs> Maybe we should talk about you. And then she's like, nope, don't want to talk about you. All right, Claire, I think we already did delusions before. So yeah, she delusions. basically said that she's delusional, but she doesn't want to talk about the contents of it yet. I'm not going to be any more specific. Yeah, she didn't want to be specific. 
dream. Sorry, I don't know. Okay, I think I think that's like the big, the big questions that we had to ask for today. So let's let's continue. Sure. Oh, Doctor. Hey, Clara my secretary. Courtney. What's up? I thought you might want to hear what Ben had to say. Quick catch up. Hello. I'm not sure Ben will be coming in <laughs> for a while. He's still pretty shook up about finding the body. Uh -huh. I'm surprised it doesn't happen more often in the line of work he's in. Anyway, he said he found the body at exactly 20 minutes past 10. 10.20? 10 For some reason, the first thing he did was look at his watch. That's all he'd say before he'd shut down. The police weren't very talkative either. PM or AM? 10.20? I'd like to help, but I don't know anything about that. Uh... Was it in the morning? Sorry, Doctor. I can't help you there. Okay, so it's 10.20. I don't know if it's a.m. or p.m. though. Ben found yes. Dr. Decker's body? Ben found Dr. Decker's body on Valentine's Night. Night. Here we go. In his office. In your office. Ew, okay. So he was killed in the office that I'm in now. Yes, you know, the 14th of February, the day of love. Or remembering a massacre, whichever's more you. How well do you know Dr. I wouldn't Dr. say Decker? we were best friends, but we did spend a lot of time together. There's only two of us that work here. I'm sure we'll become friends too, Doctor. Just try not to get murdered. Hmm. Yeah, she seemed to like telling me that. He was found in my office, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, didn't you know? Ben's one of the night shift cleaners. Oh. I'm sure he's got some tales he could tell. The police wanted to know what I was doing Valentine's night, you know, when the body was found. I was at home, all on my lonesome. So I guess that makes me a suspect. Hmm. I think the police want you to make a short list of suspects, or maybe even find the killer. You're seeing all the patients that were on the books when he was killed. There was no forced entry, so they think it might be someone he knew, or someone who had access to the office. Yeah. Like little old me. Do you think I'm a suspect, Doctor? Uh, yeah? Her attitude doesn't help, yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, you are a suspect. Uh, well, I wasn't suspect. expecting that. Oh, you were? I That's suppose weird. everyone's a suspect at the moment, yeah, even sure. you. They did mention I needed grief counselling, though, and I said you'd sort me out. I know you didn't agree, but I thought I'd let you know. Are you That's very <laughs> kind of you. What? Oh, my gosh assuming things um <laughs> grief counseling i can't answer that you just you just said i would do it even though you don't even know who i am i guess you're getting it for free though right the counseling since you work here it must be pretty cheap do you know how dr decker was killed i don't know exactly but a stabbing of some kind We'll be getting the autopsy through at some point. I'll, I'll let you know when. Were there any clues left at the I crime scene? I didn't see it myself, so I don't know. But I heard it was a bit of a mess with all the blood and everything. You know, they have people who clean up after such things, though, so you really can't tell, can you? But don't worry. That's a new chair. <laughs> like her she's like the like the smart ass secretary sort of uh why is it a new chair all i know is the police took his chair forensics was he killed on the chair why would anyone want to kill dr decker he was stabbed so that's quite a personal thing to do yeah i wouldn't be surprised if it was one of the patients who had a problem with the treatment they were getting hmm 
Dr. Decker was killed on Valentine's Day. I should ask the patients where they were on that day. Hmm. You think a patient killed Dr. Decker because of their treatment? I'm just surmising. If you're unhappy enough to kill your therapist, they're probably not doing a very good job. Dr. I wasn't Decker really in the social enemies. circle, so I don't know if he had any friends. In terms of enemies, I heard things get heated in his office sometimes, but I won't name any names. Names? Susan, Annabelle, Melissa. There are some names, but they're not names of anyone. Oh, dang I know. it. <laughs> Come on, give me something. Perhaps you should ask someone else a question. No. Ugh. Man. How do you feel? That's a good question. I just wish I knew the answer. Hmm. Is there anything else? Is there anything else that we should ask her before we go on to the patients? Hmm. I don't know anything about that. Do you think it's a knife that you stabbed with? I don't know, Doctor. Yeah, me neither. Um, how long have you worked here? It's good that you're asking lots of questions. I'm just not sure you're asking the right ones. How long have you known Decker? Oh, how well. Oh, okay. Um, I think we got everything for the most part. Uh, do you like your job? Sorry, I don't have a clue. Hmm, I'm just seeing if she has, like, motivation or something. Sorry, that doesn't mean anything to me. Okay. Alright, we can go on to the next day. I'm having a loop day. Oh, no. You're having a loop day? Why? I'm not sure that's the answer I'm looking for. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Hello. What do you mean, Luke? It's a do-over day. You won't remember. What's the name of your assistant again? Jaya, right? Jaya. You didn't know that yesterday. Can you remember where I met Hannah? Warcraft. No. No, we played that game together, but we didn't meet. Oh. Him. Oops. <laughs> you met Hannah at school. Well done, Doctor. Yeah. We met at secondary. Wouldn't it be funny if my day loops if you fail to get a question right? Wouldn't it be funny if my day loops if, you, if I get a question right? Huh. Yes, it would be funny. It, no, no, it wouldn't be funny. I agree. <laughs> oh, is he getting up? What the heck? Oh, it's like a little... Like, mini... Hello? Oh, it's like gone. Weird. Okay, continue, I guess. You just I'm having up. a loot day. Oh, here we go. Don't worry. I got this time. It Jaya. And then you met Hannah at school. Yeah, at secondary school. It's been fun, but... So, he was right? I've got a pill. Oh, jeez. Uh, <laughs> now I can say the wrong answer. Uh, what pill? Dr. Decker gave me this pill. He told me if I took it, I'd never have another loot day. It's not the sleeping pill, is it? It looks kind of mysterious. It's got a small skull and crossbones on it. Should I take the tablet, Doctor? What? <laughs> oh my gosh. Ooh, I'm getting stressed out. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> no. I mean, take the tablet. Oh. You shouldn't take any medicine unless you know what it is. Why would Dr. Decker give you a tablet that has a skull and crossbones on it? No. No. You're cool. I don't think this is getting us anywhere, though. I'll see you tomorrow. Again. <laughs> What the heck? What is going on? Am I gonna see him again? 
I'm having a loot day. Oh, you are? Okay, uh... This is the same day. I'm not sure that's the answer I'm looking for. Do we break the game? <laughs> I don't want him to take the pill, but am I stuck with him until I make it- I tell him to take the pill? I don't want him to die. It's a do-over day. You won't remember it. Well done. Yeah. Whoa, 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 what do you say? Yeah, great. Is there anything you can say that's going to break this loop for me? <laughs> Tell me about the pill. He's not even holding it right now. Um, De Decker died? I don't know. I'm not sure that's the answer I'm looking for. A tragic event? That's what you said breaks it. I'm not sure that's the answer I'm looking for. I guess you can tell me more about the pill. I never mentioned a pill this time, or a tablet. What the hell is going on here? Are you reliving my days? Oh my gosh. Ooh, I'm getting like goosebumps on my arm right now. Ooh. Okay, yep. This is this is how it's supposed to go. Why do you think I'm reliving your days? Something somewhere has changed since you arrived. Like some kind of sim theory. What's sim theory? It's a thing. Some professor believes we could be living inside a computer simulation and someone is controlling us. And there are millions of these sims. And someone somewhere behind a keyboard is just causing havoc. I'm starting to think you have that keyboard, Doctor. Oh! <laughs> don't answer that. I don't want to oh know. Oh my gosh. I can't. Oh no, don't walk away, please. I can't handle it if I see you, see you again. Okay, we gotta mention Sim Theory to him again if he ends up showing up. At midnight each day. Oh. On Valentine's night. Okay, Time's we got past freezes. it. 20 minutes past 10. Keep up, Doctor. Thinks we're gonna smother her in her sleep. I'm a grave digger, Doctor. I was at home. David is my husband. All on my lonesome. Stabbed him with a steak knife. Nothing changes. I'm a qualified angel of death. When I'm dancing. You get this date over and over. Hilda. I black out. I don't think she's got long. And Laurie just... Naked on the beach. Hannah. Is that it for today? This is getting spooky. Ooh. Deja vu. Are you sitting in exactly the same place I left you last night? Oh, that's where it all starts, Doctor. Hmm. Anyway, do you think you can fit me in today? Looking at the diary, it's just the usual suspects and you must be getting sick of them already. I've got this for you, too. It's some more footage from Professor Alderby that was hiding away. Well, come find me if you need anything. Hmm. Jasmine is new. Lacey? Okay, well, I'm with the Nathan again. I don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what the sim theory is? <laughs> Clues. Alderby footage. Nothing, of course. The faculty thinks I've gone loopy, like some kind of spongy Mobius strip. That's why I'm here, isn't it, Dr. Decker? Him. God. The great... Old one, the elder god, Cthulhu, however you address him. Listen to me, you're not listening. It's your only bloody job. Well, let's call him God. He creates this world for his amusement, something he can play with and occasionally alter to suit his mood. God loves chaos, but something goes wrong. Man and woman evolve. What was once chaotic, becomes, well, more ordered. Without chaos, he has less power. When there's too much order, he becomes impotent. Hmm. So he needs to instill chaos again. And do you know how he does this? Very no! Very religious. And yes, but you're being too granular. Hmm. He needs chaos so he can return, and the only thing stopping him is you. Not just you. You and people like you, 
psychiatrists, doctors, nurses, anyone who is caring for people who are losing their sanity. You have no comprehension how important your job is, do you? He doesn't need your version of insanity to spread. He needs chaos. It's not the same. It's just a means to an end. They're not all cultists, unfortunately. Once you see the truth, it's hard not to spread chaos yourself, to cause further insanity and harm your own. Hmm. I doubt it. But can I make you question your reality? Definitely. But in doing so, I would be promoting more chaos. On the basis, the central component of our universe is chaos. Science can only document a perception of the chaos at any one given moment in time. As by definition, chaos is unpredictable from one moment to the next. Which means that at any given moment, we can choose to alter our perception of the world, no matter how much chaos that would cause. In 10 seconds time, there will be no gravity in this room and we will float. Three, two, one. <laughs> you think nothing happened. Where's your glass, doctor? What the heck? And then there's like a glass shattering. Where's your glass? Interesting. Okay, so Alderby's like this older gentleman. It might be Alderby. Strange. He's not on the list here. But um, Alderby's just like an elderly gentleman who says that that God, his version of God, he he likes chaos and society as we know it is order. So it also sounds like he might believe in parallel or multiple un universes where like, you know, gravity, you know, isn't here or it is. If there's multiple universes, then there'd be, you know, many different outcomes for any given situation, such as like the gravity maybe not working or something like that. But, um... And then the glass shattering? That's so weird. Maybe... I don't know if he drugged him or anything. That that seems too extreme. I'm just wondering why I would hear... Like, the footage would go weird and then I would hear glass shattering. Must be something on Decker's side. Okay. Anyways. How are you doing today? Hello again, Doctor. I had a bit of a shaky loop incident. But let's not talk about it. Hmm. Let's Yesterday, talk about it. <laughs> I set fire to Hannah's clothes in the Aww. garden. I I just wanted the day to move forward. I instantly regretted it. And lo and behold, here we are, a new day. Hannah's clothes are piled of ashes. Oh, well, that's sad. Why'd you burn them? I've kept almost all of her stuff as she left it. It's just the clothes. I've decided to burn those yesterday, so here I am. Yeah. Hannah loved clothes. Every season, she'd donate her entire wardrobe to some charity or another, and only buy stuff she loved. I was left with winter. I don't even know what her favourite season was. Does it matter? What's your favourite season, Doctor? Um, I like spring. If you like spring, you're supposed to be optimistic and creative. <laughs> well, that explains why we're still having these sessions. True, true. Uh, what did Decker Dr. think of Dr. Decker you? felt that Hannah was holding me back. The memories of Hannah. In his opinion, I was holding on to the past. So I guess he cursed me. If that's even a thing. Yes, Dr. Decker cursed me. I don't really want to talk about it, but let's just say I blame him for the way I am. Can you give me some advice, Doctor? Huh. What advice do you need? I've been trying to think how I can get past today. I've come up with a couple of choices. I could set fire to Hannah's photographs. I've got them in Dropbox, anyway. But setting fire to the clothes did the trick. Or setting fire to a rocking chair. She sounds like an old lady, but she loved that rocking chair. Which I've not sat in since. Oh, man. Which one do you think's best? None of them?
The rocking chair sounds like a pretty large item to burn, but photographs are so precious and I don't I feel like photos are better than a rocking chair, but who, what would I know? I don't know, don't burn anything. That's not really something I know about. I don't know how to not burn anything. Pyromaniac, maybe? I think fire is very primal in terms of energy. Maybe if I burn something, my days will keep rolling. Although I'm not sure you're supposed to encourage arson in these sessions, Doctor. Yeah, I don't think so. Even though you want me to give you an answer. I was at Henley Church on Valentine's Day. Visiting Hannah's grave. It was the anniversary of her death. Her parents wanted a huge funeral with all the trimmings. Hannah would never have come for it. But it does get me somewhere to visit. I got to write the epitaph. Aww. Epitaph? We walk alone without our angel. I'm not religious. But when I wrote Hannah's epitaph, I knew her parents would want some acknowledgement of the great bearded one. Aww. But she was an angel to me. She was an angel to everyone. Aww. Yeah. Um. Oh, that is where Bryce worked. My goodness. Yeah, good job remembering that. I knew that sounded familiar, but I thought I heard it from him, but I realized we didn't because he's not a grave digger. Oh. When did you I leave left Henley, Henley Church? Church? About 11 o'clock on Valentine's Day. I was talking to an archaeologist who said it then covered some fossils resembling a strange cephalopod-like creature. Strange place to find an octopus, really. What? Do you think I've got something to do with Dr. Decker's murder? Maybe you should ask your assistant who Decker saw that day. Hmm. And then he said there's like an octopus or something? That they found one? Hmm. I've been alone since Hannah. I can't imagine anyone ever replacing her. Not that I've looked. Do you think I should look for someone else? Um. Look when you're ready. Thanks, Doctor. I appreciate that. Yeah. I still don't think I'm ready to move forward in that respect. I don't think you're ready either, man. <laughs> I wouldn't put that on someone else until you're ready. Uh, what were you doing at the time of Decker's murder? It was a murder. missed call. <laughs> it was Valentine's Day, so I wasn't in the mood for conversation. I've got nothing. Hmm. Burn the rocking chair. Sure. Set fire to the rocking chair. I never like the way it moves forwards and backwards. Forwards and backwards. I mean, you don't use it, so I guess that's my... <laughs> that's my, uh, opinion. It's a sea creature, like an octopus. I suppose they find dinosaur bones everywhere. Just because we're on land now doesn't mean millions of years ago this place wasn't at the bottom of the ocean. Hmm. Tell me about your mother. She's dead. Thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> Oops. Oh, uh, what's your favorite season? I like winter. Being snowed in with Hannah. Just the two of us. It's paradise. What happened to the archaeologist? She was interested. Maybe I misread. Maybe she was just being kind. I, I suppose most women wouldn't enjoy me talking about my dead ex for hours. Hmm. We'll talk to Bryce and we'll mention an octopus. I don't really know about that. Or Hannah or something. I don't know. Do you know who Hannah's grave is? I have no idea what you want me to say. I don't know. Okay. What were you doing on Valentine's Day? I was home alone. I only live five minute cycle ride from here, so I, I could have been and gone several times. But I didn't. I've never been to this office outside my scheduled appointment time. Hmm. How are you today? There's something I want to tell you about. Oh, gosh. 
something else that's wrong with me. I think I've been getting a bit out of control in my hour. How have you been getting out of control? When I first got the hour, I, I was shocked, obviously. It took me a while to work out that everyone was frozen and only I could move. Because I live on my own. What would you do, Doctor, if you had an hour where everyone was frozen? Sleep. Go to a fairground. <laughs> I would sleep. I'd spy on people. Oh yeah, don't tell them that, please. I'd steal things. I'd help people. Can I say I'd sleep? Because that's my literal answer. I'd sleep more. Not something I know about. <laughs> Dang it. It has to be one of those a answers, really? I'd help people, I guess. I did think what good could I do other than catch up with work. How do you I catch did up see with a woman grave digging? who was having her purse snatched. So I gave her purse back and the crook. I placed him on a bus a few blocks away. I have no idea where it was going. She'd never really be able to thank me, so I took another picture. Oh, and I can get different things. Okay. Can you see something behind Possibly me? Possibly a relative of yours. Possibly a patient that died here. I'm not sure. She doesn't normally say anything. It's obviously not real. Probably a side effect of the sleeping pills I'm on. There's like a portrait behind me? Yes, that does sound weird, doesn't it? I take the tamazepam as an antidepressant when I feel I need a little chemical help. I don't want to sleep through my extra hour, so obviously I don't take it at night. So he does need help with sleep, so I was right about that. Hmm. Ha! That was just an example, Doctor. <laughs> I'm sure you can come up with more exciting things to do than that. Um, spy on people, sure. Well, that makes me feel a little better. <laughs> That's probably what he's doing. There's a young mother, divorced, oh, who gosh. lives opposite me. Jessica. She's friendly and says hello to me, smiles. I've always wondered what she looks like. Naked. Oh, gosh. So one creepy. hour, I broke into her house. She was standing in her bedroom. I took it as a sign. Oh no. I took off her clothes and... Nope. Oh, great. I guess I'm gonna have to- I'm already here. <laughs> I'm already here. What did you do after? I took photos of Jessica when she was naked. When I'd I'm sure she her. really appreciates that. When she was naked and frozen. I didn't want to have to do it again, to strip her again. Oh. So I took pictures to remind myself what she looked like. That's wrong, isn't it, Doctor? Um, I would say yes. Yeah, it's wrong. I know. It's that bloody Doctor Decker. What did Doctor Decker say? He made say? me this way. It's all his fault. Hmm. Why is it Decker's like fault? Like I said, I originally presented with depression, and everything was going well for a while. Hmm. Then Doctor Decker changed. So he originally had depression, now he's like this totally different person. He was easily distracted during sessions, like he wasn't listening. I'm pretty sure he wasn't listening half the time. I don't think he wanted to know about his patients anymore. But when he did give you advice... Was it like always bad advice? What advice did he, he give you? He told me to use my imagination, to make something up, to think something crazy, and it would become real. He told me to think of a way to get more time. So I did. But he pushed me. He made me think it. Hmm. Tell me more. I dug the grave for Dr. Decker. I helped carry his coffin to the burial site. Do you know what? It didn't weigh enough to have a body in it. Why do you think that is?
Why do you think that is? Probably because they're... It's an investigation? No. The coffin wasn't empty. There was something in it. A decoy, I'd imagine. Why would there be a decoy? I'm guessing he was buried somewhere else. Or cremated. Somebody somewhere didn't want his body going in the ground. Do you want to be cremated or buried, Doctor? Um... Cremated, I guess. That's a good choice, Doctor. Less work for me. And you wouldn't really have a job, would you? Yes, I would steal too. And I have stolen. I ran out of milk, so I thought I'd go to the local all-night shop and get some more. I was absolutely intending to pay, but when I got there, everyone was frozen. I thought about leaving money on the counter, but that seemed weird. The cashier would wake and suddenly this money would have appeared from nowhere. But I've stolen bigger things. Like what? Nope. I've got oh, nothing. I gotta ask him in particular. Um, what bigger things have you stolen? From stealing milk, I moved on to petrol. From petrol, well, hmm. all those supermarkets have all kinds of electricals, so I've stolen quite a lot of that. I'm not proud. I think I've been doing it because I can. To prove to myself, either way, my extra hour is actually real. Hmm. I mean, it seems like all this stuff is real that's happening. Um, have they found any more relics? That wretched dig goes on 24-7. 25-7, if you ask me. Your patient, Nathan, caused quite a stir. He interrupted one of the female students all night, apparently. <laughs> made her miscategorize some findings going on about his dead girlfriend. Oh, now he's mentioning Nathan. It's amazing what you hear at the coffee machine. Well, I suppose that's a bonus. Hmm. We're allowed to use their coffee machine while they're there. Hmm... I mean, I'll ask more about Nathan, I guess. Does he know anything else about Nathan? No, I guess not. Wake up. <laughs> I know, I've been so tired lately ever since I got back from my trip because I stayed up so long. So I think I'm just, I'm late on sleep. I did have eight hours of, eight hours of sleep last night, but I think I'm going to need a couple more nights of good rest for my tiredness to wear off. Have you ever destroyed yes, anything? Yes, I suppose I've destroyed a few things whilst in the hour. You can be the perfect supervillain. Nobody knows it was you. What have you destroyed? No, oh, I guess I guess he won't tell me. Because you have to hope, don't you, Doctor? It's only the power of hindsight that made me realize how toxic it all was. And after a point. You go too far to be able to come back anyway. Hmm. Well, I guess the title of the game makes sense now. The Infectious Madness of Dr. Decker. It seems like he went mad and then forced at least this guy to think about, like, the extra hour he could have. And that started happening. I visited Dr. Decker once a week on Tuesdays. It's my day off because I have to work half days at the weekend. Hmm. Hmm, is there anything else? You know, Spray said Nathan was the, the female student on Valentine's night. Sorry. I don't know. Oh, oops. I didn't mean to ask you. I wanted to ask the other girl. Since I know how to spell Tamazepam now. Maybe she'll know about it. I don't really have anything to tell you about that. Mm, okay. Oh, where was- where were you on Valentine's? Oh, he was just at home, huh? 
I was home alone. I only live five minutes cycle. Oh yeah, and then he said he was really close, and he could have went back and forth several times. All right, Bryce. So Nathan was at the grave talking up this lady. Bryce was alone. So we'll talk to Mariana now. Actually, let's talk to Claire. Claire. How are you today? It's the anniversary of my parents' death today. I went to the lake house. I always go to the lake house anyway. But it's also where they died. Aww. What did you do at the I lake house? I stood for a while, looking across the water. It's peaceful there. It's the place that makes me feel the most. There was a girl there. By the lake. Uh, only about nine or ten. Huh. She was fishing if you can call it that, with one of those nets on a stick. Did you speak to them? I don't know why I talked to her. She looked sad. I don't usually talk to children. But she seemed different, special. I'm allowed to talk to her, aren't I, Doctor? Yes. I, I don't know. I mean, why wouldn't you be allowed to talk to her? Yes, you can talk with the girl. Good. It felt nice. I felt like I was being nice. I felt human. So I can find her and talk to her again, Doctor. I mean, as long as you don't stab her, sure. Then I will. I'll look for her next time I'm there. Mind games. Okay. Was the girl, why Maybe was the girl sad? hunting again, and well, she's seen some of the skins he hung around the lake house. Oh. Where's David today? David wasn't there. Or at least I didn't see him. I didn't go inside. Um, I forgot my key and the spare was missing. Why wouldn't you just go get the key? Wait, why wouldn't you knock on the door? Why didn't you, you knock? I don't have an answer for you on that one. Do you want to see David? Hmm, it doesn't seem like she's... She wants to see him. Clearly, she doesn't want to see him anymore because he's, like, sick. What skins did Animal the girl skins. see? Um, David hunts, uh, then skins. It's horrible, really. Um, hmm. He's not really good at either job, so the skins still have great lumps of bloody carcass hanging off them. That's gross. <laughs> I'm sure he'll get better with practice. No, her husband isn't dead. I thought that at first, too, but the, his, her husband lives in the lake house. How'd your parents they die? They died of carbon monoxide poisoning. I was staying at a friend's house. Otherwise, I would have died too. Hmm. I'm not sure. It was a faulty boiler, I think. Hmm. There's very little I'm not willing to talk about, Doctor. But I'm afraid I don't know anything about that. Okay, she thinks it was an accident though with the boiler? I see what you're trying to do. <laughs> but I really don't know anything about that. Hmm. Oh, does she have a, a different husband then? Perhaps we should change the subject. You seem to be struggling. Oh yeah, that is true. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting a little bit confused about her husband. Because she said... I thought she said that David stayed at the lake house. Or maybe that was just past tense. The day Dr. Becker was killed, uh, I had a session with him in the morning at my usual time, 11 o'clock. That was the last time I saw him. What did you talk about, Doc? What did you talk to Decker about in your Dr. last Decker session? Decker made me an offer that I couldn't refuse. I'll be taking it to the grave with me, though. As did he. Hmm. Do you love your love? husband? Yes. I suppose I always will. Hmm. How did you meet David? Matt isn't the right word. David has always been there, in the shadows, on the periphery. 
I move in very exclusive circles. You tend to see the same faces. What do you do for your job? Are you bored? Do you want me to talk about something else? I'm curious else? as how, how she's so rich. I don't... What do you do for work? I don't know anything about that. Perhaps you should be taking more notes. Hmm. Okay. How did the girl seem special? I don't know. I suppose she just reminded me of me. I spent a lot of time alone as a child. She said she was trying to catch some strange creatures that she's seen in the water. I don't know. Minnows, probably. Everything's strange when you're a child. Hmm. Strange creatures. When did your parents It was 12 die? years ago. I was still very young. Too young to be an orphan, anyway. I had to toughen up quickly. Hmm. Yeah, but they found the octopus rune in the graveyard, right? That's what I thought initially. That would be weird if it was the octopus, though. It's like a full circle kind of thing. I don't move in any circles anymore. Those people were my parents' friends, not mine. What were you doing on Valentine's, Valentine's Day night? night? I was at the lake house, watching David, like I always do. Yeah, so David's not dead. He's watching David like she always does. But she also said that she didn't go inside the house. Which makes me think of her as more of a suspect than ever. She was... The day Dr. Decker was killed, uh, I had a session with him in the morning at my usual time, 11 o'clock. The day Decker was killed. That was the last time I saw him. He saw Decker then. Oh, okay. We're good. Um, hmm. That was weird. Oh, there we go. Hmm. Valentine's Day night. Oh. Watching David. So David is her husband. He's alive, it sounds like. Oh, wait. Or... I mean, unless David died after Valentine's Day, but I don't think so. Hmm. Yeah, sure. As long as it's not a spoiler. Alright, you haven't seen- you haven't played this game either, so you can let me know what you're thinking. Hmm. She seems really suspicious, because first she's like, I didn't even go into the house, and then she's like, I didn't even know- I didn't see David. He wasn't inside. First she says she talked to the girl, and that's it. And then she's like, what'd you do on Valentine's Day night? Oh, I was, you know, taking care of David, of course. Very strange. Very suspicious. Why were you watching he David? He has trouble with his mental faculties and is getting worse. Yeah, that's what I yes. figured. I'll watch him and make sure nothing bad happens. Or is she thinking that she's watching him because she stabbed him to death? Is that what you're thinking, Kaiden? <laughs> Okay. Let's go to Mariana, I guess. Mariana. Uh, how are you today? I haven't been back to the beach since our last session, and no blackouts. New doctor and new hope. You're much better behaved than Dr. Decker. Oh, gosh. Did Dr. Decker sleep with her? I assume so. Uh, why am I better behaved? Dr. Decker dated his patients. That's not good behavior. I knew it. Is it? <laughs> Which patient did he date? I think her name was Scarlet. One of his patients, an older woman. I guess that's how he liked them. She's all up on the couch. Um, hmm. Scarlet. It's Scarlet with two T's. Pretentious. Oh. <laughs> Gotcha. She has a Cthulhu necklace. Oh. Is that what that is? I just thought it was a, an octopus. <laughs> Strange creature in the lake. Okay, I see it. I see it now. What can you tell me about Decker? I'm actually not that familiar with Lovecrafty and stuff. <laughs> or Lovecraft in general, I should say. What can you tell me about Decker? He went out for drinks. Didn't you know? He said it was a breach of something or the other, but I can be pretty persuasive when I want to be. Shh. 
What was the question? I asked her, what can you tell me about Decker? Hmm. Did you just go out for drinks? Yeah, drinks. I think Dr. Decker ordered neat whiskey. I have water. I don't drink. I think you do. Um, but okay. <laughs> oh, all your love craft loved craft comes from Darkest Dungeon. <laughs> Same then, me too. Why did you have drinks with Decker? I guess it was a couple of days before Valentine's Day. Oh. It wasn't a date or anything. I noticed in the recessions that he'd been acting a little strange. He just didn't seem right. I wanted to find out what was wrong. Hmm. Did you find out what was wrong? No idea. Is that a dance move? <laughs> I guess I will not ask that. How are you persuasive? I know. It's pretty hard to believe, isn't it? I feel pretty ugly. But I think I have a nice smile. I guess that's how... <laughs> Is this part of her thing? That's how she's persuasive? She makes you think that... She thinks she's ugly, so then you try to comfort her? Lots of people find me attractive, but I've seen something truly beautiful. It makes me feel dull by comparison. I have a recurring dream where I find something beautiful in the sea. Something beautiful in the sea. But I don't know you that well yet, Doctor. Let's wait a while before I tell you my most intimate secrets. Sorry to cut oh my in gosh. Doctor. I've just had a phone call from I, a solicitor. Oh, Ben's oh trying to gosh. sue us for nervous shock. Oh, I have nervous shock. To talk it out, or should I find a solicitor to represent us? Sorry to be pushy. I just think we should act quickly before it's too late. Oh my gosh. Well, just oh. let me know. Oh my gosh, girl. Girl, you can't just be popping up on me like that. Oh, that just gave me a heart attack. <sighs> Alright, we're good. Gosh, gosh darn it, Jaya. <laughs> spilled, did you really spill your beer or are you just saying that? Because if I was holding a drink, I would have spilled it all over myself. <laughs> oh, why do you have to pop up on me? Like, any sort of pop-up scare the crud out of me. No, oh, I hate like that. Now. Is our session up now? Oh my god. It is not over until I say that this discussion is over. Okay, what were you doing on Valentine's? I didn't do anything on Valentine's Day. No, I'm I washed my to hair look at and the then screen. I walked along the beach for the whole <laughs> night. It's actually true. Oh. I saw one of your patients actually. The nurse. She was on the pier with someone. Oh. Pretty much all of the night too. So I can vouch for her, even though. She probably didn't see me. Interesting. Wait, hold on. Let me listen to that one more time. I didn't do anything on Valentine's Day. I washed my hair, and then I walked along the beach for the whole night. You walked on the beach it's for actually the entire true. night? I thought you just said you weren't I at the beach. I saw one of your patients, actually. She the told nurse. me she wasn't at the beach, so she, she hasn't been getting blackouts. She was on the pier with someone. Why are you all lying to me? Pretty much all of the night, too, so I can vouch. No, I don't believe you're on the beach. Now I really think you're suspicious. How do you feel not going to the beach? I haven't been back to the beach since our last session. Oh, uh, but then again, it was Valentine's Day. Never mind. Kind Never mind. That makes sense, then. Since our last session. Okay. So the timeline still works. I thought... I don't know what I was thinking. I just really wanted to ca catch her in another lie. <laughs> And you really did spill your beer. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, that's the worst. I thought Mariana said she didn't drink. Don't ask me. I don't know. You don't know if you drink? I don't know. Yeah. I thought Mariana said she didn't drink. Bryce said Nathan was with a female student all night. Okay. Guess we're gonna talk to Aline now. How 
are you today? I haven't had a great day, to be honest. Aww. Someone accused me of stealing from my patients, which I would never do. Plus, Hilda's getting worse. Hilda's the one I mentioned in our last session. She's dying. I can tell. I need to see her before it's too late. Why were you accused of stealing? No, you just kill them. <laughs> this? Well, it started with this. It's a locket. Alice, one of my patients, gave it to me before she died. Oh. That's convenient. What else have your patients given you? Um, I have a few other things. Um, a watch. A ring. One patient gave me a... Uh, a little china bird. They're not valuable. Just trinkets, really. Hold on. I gotta ask. Wait, why? Why do you lie about drinking? See if that comes up with anything. Don't know. It's cold in here. Okay, never mind. I thought that was gonna be the thing. Lying. Lewis. Alright. Go back to Ellen. Eileen, they're all trinkets. Strictly speaking, all of the patient's belongings should be passed on to family members after they die. But Alice's son never visited. Oh, so you just he didn't take care about his mum. Why would he care about some worthless piece of jewelry? Hmm. It just doesn't feel right to me. What do you think, Doctor? Am I wrong to keep the locket? Yes, it's wrong to keep the locket. No, it's not wrong to keep the locket. Hmm. Well, supposedly she said that she was given the locket by another, or by the person. I don't know. I think it is wrong. Yeah. Really? Give it to the family. I don't see the harm. Alice wanted me to have it. It's, you're not her family you member, and though. Terry and all the other nurses just don't understand. Mm. I'm sure, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, sounds good, Sausage. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> Sleep well. I'll try not to get too spooked by uh, people popping up and talking really loudly into my face. That really scared me. <laughs> what were you doing on Valentine's night? Um, actually... I had a hot date. It wasn't anything serious, just some guy I know. Did you go to the pier? But it was a nice date. Different to what I'm used to. Where did you go on the date? The pier, right? It was um, very traditional, old fashioned, you know? Dinner at a nice restaurant. Then we went for a little walk along the pier. Yep. Held hands. Had a bit of a kiss. Then he called a cab and I went home alone. Movie length. That means I've been playing officially for two hours. What time did you get I the think cab? It was about 11 when I left Max. I'm sure you could check with the taxi company if you really wanted to. If you think I need an alibi. Registrar. Okay, okay. Can you tell me anything else about yes. Dr. Decker? I had a session with Dr. Decker on Valentine's Day. Um, three o'clock, I think. But just a few hours later, he was... I still can't get over it. I keep being afraid that Jaya is just going to pop up and be like, Why haven't you given me an answer yet? Why didn't you see Hilda? To help her finish her unfinished business. People who are dying always have things they wish they could do before they go. We leave a lot of loose ends in our lives. We're very messy that way. What's well, Hilda's unfinished Hilda business? Hilda wants to see her daughter. Huh. She's in Australia, so I'm going to have to use my talent. What talent? I can change my skin. What I look like. Oh no. I can turn into a patient's loved one. I just, oh, um. No, that's messed up. 
and ask them to imagine that the person they want to see is sitting right here next to them. No wonder and that one lady gave you the necklace. I become them. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Some it's how sort I of shapeshifter. That's how I comfort them. That's a little whack. <laughs> oh hey Max, how are you doing? <laughs> so you're a shapeshifter. How does it comfort them? I only shift at work to help my patients. I don't have any interest in using it as a party trick or to deceive anyone. I've shifted a few times now. I honestly couldn't tell you how many. Who accused you of stealing? Of course it was Terry that accused me of stealing. One of the other nurses. She's actually trying to make out that I'm some kind of HSK. Healthcare serial killer. You know, like those nurses that kill loads of their patients. I'm surprised you haven't heard of it. Anyway, because a few of my patients have died on me, and she's some of the those angel of death, have according gifts, to the, her Terry coworkers. Terry thinks it means that I've been killing them off. Yeah, that's a little weird, though. I'd probably think the same thing as well. Called it. Yeah, we did, <laughs> or you did, actually. Who was your date with? His name is Max. He's really sweet, but I don't see a future between us. Aw, man. He's not really my type. No, she, he took you on that nice dinner date, and then you guys walked on the pier? I've known Max a couple of years, but this is the first time we've been on a date. I don't think he's boyfriend material. So the reason she's kind of here is because she thinks she can shape shift. shift. Is that, is that uh, what I'm understanding? How can you tell when people are dying? You can sense it, you know? It's like when you're outside and there's a sudden change in the light or the air feels different and you know it's going to rain. It's like that. Hmm. I always know when one of my patients is fading, even before the doctors know. Their energy changes. Oh, it sounds silly when I put it into words. Oh, I sound like my mum. Um, your mom. <laughs> My mom's a nightmare. I said she was into all this new age stuff, right? So she thinks she can tell me what I should be doing all the time because she got a message from her spirit guide that said I'm not eating well, or I'm not getting enough sleep, or I'm not looking after my inner moonbeam or whatever. Oh, uh, so she's nuts. very spiritual. But she's my mom. I love her, so... I have to take it. I don't know. Sorry. Hmm. I think we've got a bit off track. Maybe you should check your notes. Sassy. All right. How was Decker on Valentine's Dr. Day? Dr. Decker seemed fine on Valentine's Day. He seemed to be in a good mood. It didn't seem like anything was bothering him. Hmm. New age. Sorry, no. Hmm. Who have you become? Like, like the people that she's been? Who have you become? Um, no. That's not a question for me. Hmm. Well, I guess she said she only became her patients, like, people that she wants to see. All right, Jaya. Keep, like, freaking bouncing out of nowhere. <sighs> How are you? Hey, you. Thanks for helping me with this grief thing. I'm not sure I have it, though. You took off your shoes, I guess. Um, tell me about Ben. So, should I get a solicitor, or shall we try and talk it out with him? A solicitor? I guess we could get a solicitor. But then again, he works for us. Maybe we could just talk about it. We'll talk about it. Good choice. I'll go and see Ben to see if I can get him to call off the dogs. I have no idea what's gotten into him. Perhaps it's his mum. Ben's mom? She was cuddling him like he was six. He's 25. Well, Ben saw a dead body, so... I, hmm. 
Shall we talk about grief? Who has a session on Valentine's Day? On Valentine's Day, Day, Dr. Decker had a session with Claire Castleford at 11 and that nurse, Elin, at 3. Everyone else cancelled. You should see this place Christmas Eve. I was at home though, Hmm. so I don't actually know who came in. Dr. Decker did phone and ask me for Nathan's number, which is a bit strange. Asked about Nathan's number. Decker call you? Dr. Decker felt that Hannah was holding me back. Hmm. Did Decker call you on Valentine's Day? Hmm. It's only about a phone number, perhaps? It was it was a missed call. It was Valentine's Day, so I wasn't in the mood for conversation. It was a missed call. Oh, okay. He was just upset on Valentine's Day. Got it. I guess that's all he's going to tell us about it. Okay, she's oh, I don't really know where to start. I feel a bit numb. Maybe we should just talk about him. What was Decker like? It hadn't even been a year. He was a quiet, solitary man. A good listener, as I suppose you'd need to be. His confidence did grow as time wore on, but that's what you'd expect after you've fitted in. I mainly miss our chats. He used to work late with me and tell me things about the patients, things that I probably shouldn't have heard, but did. What do you think of the patients? Nah, perhaps you shouldn't say. You can ask me, go on, I'll tell you what I think. Ooh, yeah, tell me about Nathan. Oh, I just want to cuddle Nathan all up. He's such a <laughs> mess. He's always in the same clothes. Aww. You know, he barely talks to me, though. It's the same hello every time. He reminds me of Tom. Who's Tom? Tom was a quiet mess, like Nathan. Youngish in his early 20s. He taught piano, but he did have a strange hobby. What is Tom's strange hobby? Tom liked to base jump. That's basically falling from a huge building That's or cool. mountain That's that and strange. pulling your parachute before you hit the ground. <laughs> he started to think he could fly. Oh gosh. Dr. Decker tried to talk him out of it, but Tom had to prove his point. So one day, Tom decided to base jump without a parachute. Oh no. Can you guess what happened? He died? He did die. He was hit by a rock from further up the mountain. He never got to fly. Nathan thinks he knows what his problem is too, but if he's not careful, he'll get hit by that rock. I wish I'd said goodbye. Hmm. Okay. Um, let's see. Is there someone else you wanted to say goodbye to? I wish I'd said goodbye to Dr. Decker. It was so sudden. Here, then gone. He resigned anyway, but that's not the same, is it? Wait, he resigned? Dr. Decker resigned shortly before his murder. It's sad, but doctors come and go and only poor Jaya remains. I've got his resignation letter somewhere. You know, I do all the hiring and firing around here. Well, Professor Alderby and the Trust technically do that. Hmm. Okay, let's take a look at that evidence. To whom it may concern, please please accept this letter as notice of my intention to resign from my position. Wow, what a letter. (laughs) That, That doesn't help me that much. What else are we gonna ask Jaya? Did you? Why did you work late with? We worked late together on all sorts of things. He was preoccupied with finding patterns in patients, 
trying to find some kind of order. What patterns? Mainly he, he was searching it? for a common experience the patients might have had. That's what led them to his office. He'd study everything, even the referral letters. Oh, so like the octopus is kind of like, the Cthulhu is kind of like a common experience. Yes. Letters, parking tickets, holiday destinations. You know, I find those referral letters... He was sure there was a pattern in them. Professor Alderby? Professor Alderby is a trustee. Did I not mention that? Hmm. He's a trustee. I think I'm going to get into trouble now. Have you ever heard of secret shoppers? Well, Professor Alderby posed as a patient to test Dr. Decker. It's just a thing that he does. I'm sure he'll come and visit you at some stage, so please play along. Oh, okay. Maybe he was just pretending to be a patient then in those... in that footage. Hmm. Okay, let's talk Mariana about Mariana. Mariana is a special girl. You know, there's something about her that just makes you want to follow her. Maybe that's what a trendsetter looks like. Hmm. Trendsetter? I can't help you with that. Sorry. It's very interesting that you asked me that. It's not something I can answer, though. Okay, I guess that's all she has to say about Mariana. How about... Aline. Elin seems like a lovely person. I'm not really sure why she's here. Because she thinks she's a shapeshifter, that's why. Wait, hold on. I've got no idea what you're talking about. Okay, so she doesn't Sorry. know about that. That's why. Okay. Uh, Claire? Claire seems to be shaken by something. Mm -hmm. you know, I offer her drinks every time she comes in, but she always refuses them. It's as if she just wants to come in, get her session over with, and then run off to do something else. It's a bit rude, isn't it? Hmm. Yeah, that's pretty true of her. Wait. You're new, huh? Wait a second. I found the key points, but I haven't even talked to them. Okay, I'll definitely have to talk to them after this. Okay, tell me about Bryce. Hey, Nezodam! <laughs> We're playing uh, The Infectious Madness of Dr. Decker, which is like a... Was, I don't know if I could say live action for a video game, but I'm going to say it anyways. It's like a live action murder mystery, basically. Is this speed dating? It looks like it, doesn't it? All right, tell me about Bryce. I think Bryce has a lot of misdirected anger. I don't think I like him that much. You know, sometimes when things overrun, he's outside waiting for you, and he stares at me as if he's undressing me with his eyes. You know, he's not the first person that's done that, but still, you know, it feels worse coming from him. Yeah, he's a little creepy. All right, I want to talk to these other new people. Jasmine? Hello, Jasmine. I'm Jasmine. I don't come in that often. What happened to Dr. Decker? He died. I don't know what else to tell you. Decker was murdered. Oh. When? How? Sorry. You probably don't know, do you? He was stabbed. Ouch. I didn't really know him that well. I'm trying to remember what I was doing on Valentine's Day now. Hmm. What were you doing on Valentine's Day? I had to work all day at Providence. Providence. I really don't know. Sorry. What do you mean? You just to told me about Providence. <laughs> hmm. What's your problem? When you see a painting, it, it stands still. When, when I, I see, see one, a painting, <laughs> it's moving. Like a oh, like needle. Harry Potter in the like Hogwarts. Little vines. That's cool. But when there's a person. <laughs> In the painting. Oh gosh. What? 
What happens if there's a person in the painting? They watch me. So what, you have like paranoia or something? Oh, that's giving me goosebumps. Paranoia? I don't know. Why did they watch disapprovingly? Because they don't think I know how to appreciate art. Because I'm too young. Wait, how old are you? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, sorry. That's a little bit rude to ask a lady. I'm sorry. Do you appreciate yes, art? Yes, of course. Otherwise I wouldn't be working in an art gallery. I love art. I love paintings. Like I said, they move for me. Creepy uh, zoom in, but okay. Art gallery? I don't really have anything to say about that. Oh, okay. No, sorry. Hey, you don't want to talk about anything art related. How did the paintings move? When I want them to, normally. When I want to really get inside what's going on. But some paintings, I can't stop. Which paintings can't you stop? I've been stop? working on portraits at home, outside work. So that's but her issue. My paintings aren't so good. Nowhere near Providence standard. I painted a man, Dorian. You know, after Dorian Gray. Mm hmm. Dorian Gray. I wanted to try and capture someone aging, so I divided the face into thirds and painted a boy, his father, and his grandfather in each third. It was hideous. <laughs> and it started talking to me. That's not something I know about. What did it that say? I'm ugly. That I have no talent. Nothing will become of me. Is that true, Doctor? No, it's not true. <sighs> I hear it so many times with that wretched painting. It's in my head. So it's like schizophrenia, maybe. How do you spell schizo? Beats me. Frenia. Am I spelling it right? I don't really know what you mean. Okay. I was just seeing maybe she's already been diagnosed with something. He was shy. And then less so. When I told him about my problem, he told me to set fire to it. Set fire to it? That's what he told Nathan yeah, he too, could have I been think. more specific. I tried to set fire to Providence. At that time, I thought the only way to fix my problem was to and set you still fire work to the there, even though you tried to set Several fire. Didn't make it. The entire art gallery. Luckily, my boss didn't press charges. What? The police did arrest me, though. You still work there, police? My boss, Petra. She's just lovely like that. Providence has gone through some tough times, and I've only been there a year. Huh? She invested her life savings, and it's still not making any money. Such a sweet lady. You'd do anything for her. Petra. Dr. Decker told me to burn it. It was nothing to do with Petra. Mm hmm. Was the fire started for insurance money? No. Why are you saying that? I don't even know if Petra has insurance. Was Dorian destroyed in the fire? I already ripped up the painting. It screamed as I cut it. And now whenever I close my eyes, I can see it, hear it. I need the tablets, Doctor. I need them. Oh gosh. Tablets? The Timazepam? The sleeping tablets. The ones you gave me last time. Dr. Decker gave them to me. He's they giving help. everyone to Mazapan. I know it's in my head. I know paintings can't talk. What's wrong with me, Doctor? Why do I do this? I don't think it has anything to do with your sleeping. Seems like you sleep just fine. If anybody needs to Mazapan, it's, it's Bryce. We all know that. I think you lack a little bit of self-confidence. Thank you, Doctor. I'll think about that. And the prescription, please? No? Uh, no prescription. 
Who told you to ask that? I honestly don't know. Hmm. Yeah, that is recurring meds. So it seems like, at least for three people. Oh, I found everything there is to know about Jasmine. Interesting. Um, it seems at least three people are taking this sleeping medicine. All right, Lacey. Hello, Lacey. I'm Lacey Hendricks. So you don't know about me then? Nope. <laughs> what do I need to know? No, what Where about you? Start? My next door neighbor in Jobson Hill, where I live, she was murdered. 80, and they diversion burgled her. But she was wise to it and started calling the police. They slit her throat with a bread knife. Mm -hmm. So I started a neighborhood watch. Okay. It was me and Agnes. Everyone else thought we were overreacting. If they want their throats cut, that's up to them, living in their bubbles. But Agnes... Poor Agnes. She went missing, and still is. And that's what people think. But it's not the truth. What's the truth? It killed them. It looks normal enough. A smartly dressed door-to-door -door saleswoman. I know because I heard my other neighbors shout at her. No Jehovah's! They think anyone knocking is a Jehovah. But she said she was selling double glazing. Somebody else mentioned glazing too, but I don't know what that is. Is that a drug? I don't know. I didn't answer the door. That's not too nowadays. But I watched her go to Agnes's. Poor Agnes. She let her right into her house. Hmm. What happened after Agnes let the woman into I her house? I could only see the silhouette. It turned from a person into a well. It looked like, I guess you'd call it a, a Medusa. Snakes for her face. And Agnes just fell to the floor. A few minutes later, the woman left, smiling like the cat that got the cream. That was the end of Agnes. Hmm. You have proof Agnes I is saw dead? It with my own eyes. What more proof do I need? You're starting to sound like Dr. Decker. He didn't believe me either. I suppose I could tell you. But I don't have all the gossip. Cthulhu for sure, yep. Yep, another Cthulhu re reference. Does she have anything else to say about Agnes's death? Do you still see Agnes? Keep asking. But I don't know. Hmm. Okay, let's just go on to the general questions. I didn't have Decker. much luck with him, like I said. He didn't believe me. He thought I was having a, a, a hallucination caused by the stress of my neighbor being so brutally murdered. Oh, so she was murdered for sure, got it. Where is Agnes, though? I haven't found her, have they? She's missing. Have they? Don't know. Stress. Hmm. What else can I ask her about it? Yes, they found Agnes. No, they didn't find Agnes. I don't know. Did they find Agnes? I don't think so. They haven't found her because that thing ate her. I'm just saying no because I don't know. Or made her disappear or something. Her useless husband managed to survive unscathed, though. Husband? Agnes's husband. Don't know much about him. Other than the fact that he looks at me like I'm six foot under every time we meet. He doesn't seem too bothered she's gone missing either. He did at first, when the police were crawling around. But now they've gone, that stopped. If I hadn't seen that thing eat her, I'd... 
Do you think her husband murdered her? No. He's a weasley little man who spends far too much time in his garden. It's probably like the National Trust back there. The constant digging and building, pruning and sawing. Okay, so she thinks... Hmm. So she thinks, like, Cthulhu, or somebody that looks like a Medusa, killed her neighbor Agnes. Was Ron digging a grave? What a thing to say! Why would you say that? Because he's gardening all the time. I kept watching the front door after that saleswoman had left, and nothing. She didn't leave, and you can't get out the back since the council sold the garage block. Ron's a gardener, not a killer. Unless... Oh, uh, what? Sorry, I've not heard anything about that. Okay, I'm gonna say unless what? Agnes said Ron was laying the foundations for a new greenhouse. You don't think... Hmm. You think Agnes is in the foundation? I need to call the police. Oh no. I, I need to call them now. But they won't listen to me. I tried to tell them about the monster, but they didn't believe me. Hmm. They won't believe me about this, I promise you. Yeah. Please, could you call them, Doctor? Yes, I'll call the police or no, I won't call the police. I mean, we don't have any evidence. Oh, you just noticed my Star Trek shirt. Yep. Repping that Star Trek. This is the next gen shirt I got as a present. I don't I haven't watched all of the next gen quite yet. I'm more of a the original series girl myself, but I do appreciate this medical medical shirt. Medical division. Uh no, I won't call the police. I'll get someone else to do it. Okay. I suppose I shouldn't really expect any help from you. <laughs> Rude. Dr. Decker used to call me the leech lady. That's that's even ruder. Why would she call you the leech lady? He said that I leech thoughts from people. Suck them right out of their heads. Is that your ability? And I can put thoughts in there too. I'm not that clever though, am I, Doctor? I mean, it's not as if I was having an affair with Ron and Agnes was in the way and needed to disappear. So I made this story up. I mean, what do you think I do for a living anyway? Um, Ron. Oh, affair with Ron. No, I can't really answer that. Interesting. Hmm. Let me type in Agnes in the way. What happens if I type in hint? She asks what I think she does for a living. Maybe she's unemployed. Maybe she sells double glazing. Oh. What a what a clue. Doctor, you're so good. We're going to get on just fine. What? What? You sell double glazing? What the heck? That sounds like something I should know about. But I don't. Uh, were you... Did you kill Agnes? Are you the person who turned into a Medusa? That wasn't creepy at all. Oh, sorry. Did you Agnes? Have you been listening to me? Ask me something about my problem. I'm not really sure about that. Hmm. Hmm. And Cthulhu. That's not really I a question Cthulhu. I can answer. Lou. I don't know how to spell that. Um, Medusa, I guess? Question mark? Have you been listening to me? Well, you said that the lady looked problem. like, the thing that looked like killed uh, Agnes looked like a Medusa, so that's why I ask. Okay, let's I was at Henley Church, 
They had a service that ran right up till midnight. For us less fortunates without a love in their life. Well, now. Do you have someone, Doctor? Do you have a love in your life? Hmm. Wait, let I me... was at Henley Church. Oh yeah, another they had Henley a service Church. That ran right up till midnight. For us less fortunates without a love in their life. Hmm. Garden Club. You should come with me one night. It's a lovely way to meet new people. And you're in the garden club, and Agnes's husband was <laughs> was in, likes to garden. Oh, I asked her everything. Don't know. Committed. Hmm. Yeah, Henley Church again. I mean, I guess there isn't much I can That's to ask really her about. That's not really a question I can answer. She's all green. Hmm. No. Sorry. Oh, sorry, not Lacey. Jasmine was there. Sorry, Doctor. I dozed off there. <laughs> hmm. Can I get a hint for him? Oh. Okay, you live by yourself. I don't have anything to say to that. No. Sorry. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know why I would give me the hint about living alone. I got all the important stuff, though, it looks like. Oh. Why have you missed the beach? You do something a lot, you're gonna miss it. I suspect I'll go back there soon, but it's helped with the blackouts. Oh, were you seeing Decker? People are quick to put labels on everything. I suppose Dr. Decker was more than just a therapist to me. We had a lot of things in common, but we weren't seeing each other. Hmm. Can you know anything about the Henley Church? Sorry, no. Uh, I, I think your button's undone. Hmm. <laughs> Henley Church to Mazepim mm -hmm. and the octopuses. Yep. Oh, and the time weirdness going on with Nathan. Uh, are you seeing someone at the I'm moment? I'm not seeing anyone at the moment. Are you offering, Doctor? Yes, I'm offering! <laughs> what the heck? No. It sounded like an offer to me, Doctor. Oh my gosh. Were you really washing your hair? Some girls say that they're washing their hair when they don't want to go out, but I was genuinely washing my hair. Do you think well, my hair I is pretty, Doctor? That. Why does she always need this validation? Why do you feel the need to ask if your hair is pretty? <laughs> yeah. I'm insecure, Doctor. Isn't it obvious? Yes. Yes, it's obvious. Um, insecure. No idea. <laughs> Nathan, Bryce, and Claire have the time weirdness? Oh, yeah, they do. Claire. But Claire, Claire has an anger problem, doesn't she? What's, what's her time weirdness? She just met that, like, little girl that was, like, fishing by herself, right? Have you been dancing? I've danced around in my living room, but no clubs since last time. I like dancing around in my underwear. Sometimes less. <laughs> Zoom in. <laughs> Sometimes less. Alright, can you stop making weird sexual poses on my couch? Your hair isn't pretty, you know. Your hair's pretty, <sighs> it's fine. It's such a mess. But thank you. This is real life. <laughs> no, stop it. It's not pretty. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. 
Type your question here. Type. Um, okay, let's see if we can get another hint. She says she likes dancing in her underwear. Thanks, game. Oh, my goodness. I am going crazy. I thought you said Claire. Oh, man. This game's tripping me out. Yeah, Merit Mariana does. Time weirdness because of her blackouts. <laughs> All right, game. Don't worry. I got you. Doctor, I don't think our relationship has got to that point yet. Sorry. I don't know. The game told me I should ask you about dancing in your underwear. Or not your underwear. I don't know. Oh, hold on a second. Wait, you're nude. Sometimes if you dance in the nude and then you wake up and you're naked. But like, where do your clothes go? <laughs> hold on. I gotta get to the bottom of this. Um... I don't... I don't know what it's trying to get me to ask. The hint just said that she dances around in less than her underwear. Do I just say that back at her? No. Doctor, I don't think our relationship has got to that point yet. <laughs> <laughs> alright, alright, I'm gonna stop talking to you now. Nathan... Anybody else have any questions I can ask them? Oh. She stopped breathing. I don't know. I was six. Something oh. to do with her lungs. Is your father alive? I don't know. Okay, why do you live alone? Sorry. No. I think Claire killed her husband and still thinks he's alive in the lake house. Yeah, that's that was my first impression, too. Can we get a hint from this? Oh, 53 seconds. Um, is your husband dead? Sorry, I don't know anything about that. I'm sure you don't. How is David? Where is David today? David wasn't there. Or at least I didn't see him. I didn't go inside. Um, I forgot my key, and the spare was missing. I'm sure I had a spare key for the lake house, but I can't find it anywhere. Weird. I don't really need one if David is around. Why didn't you go to the lake house? Hmm. So she's not really concerned with that. I should ask Lace Lacey about the neighborhood watch. Already did. Did the, the painting of Dorian get destroyed in the fire? No. Hmm. Maybe Jaya should check Ellen's alibi with the taxi company. I don't know about that, Doctor. Check the taxi. One step ahead of you, boss. Elin was picked up from the pier just after 11 p.m. Hmm. There was no way she could have got from there to here in an hour. Okay, so Elin, for the most part, has an alibi. What can you tell me about Dr. Decker's patients? Most of the patients are suspects, according to the police. Almost all the patients are referred, and some of them are privates, but Dr. Decker didn't introduce any of them. Who or what is So you Hulu? watched the tapes. Ah, gold star for you. What? What happened to Dr. Decker's glass in it the video? Smashed. How did the glass smash? Cthulhu. I don't know anything about that, I'm afraid. Hmm. Is there anything else we could ask her? What does she think about chaos? 
Oh, we can ask about the video, of course. Nobody likes chaos, Doctor. We're supposed to be restoring order, don't you think? I don't know. Oh. I was just gonna say yes. <laughs> Sorry, Doctor. I don't know. Hmm. What else could we ask about that video? I'm not trying to hide anything. I just don't know. You don't know what to think about Dr. Enderby? I think you might be barking up the wrong tree there. I don't know what else to ask about the video. Everyone has to believe in something, don't they, Doctor? What do you believe in? I don't know anything about that, I'm afraid. Hmm. Hmm, okay. Sorry, say that again. Okay. I saw her messing with a bracelet, so I thought I'd ask about that, since I figured out about Bryce's like photography from that little cutscene. Oh well. Yeah, we're gonna ask for a hint from Ariana really quick. Oh. She looks cold. Oh, of course. It's, uh, it's a bit chilly in here. The leather is not warm, either. Uh, do you need a jacket? I don't know what to say. Where's this leading? Um... Nope. Is the window open? Do you want me to close the window? I don't know. Is there a breeze? I am not sure. Clueless. Hmm. Let me ask if Jaya knows if it's cold in here. I'm not trying to hide anything. I no. just don't know. Hmm. Yeah, leather? No idea. Yeah, not quite. Okay. I think we're just gonna call it a day. David Hunt. I can change my skin. Then skin. Dr. Decker dated his patients. I had a hot date. We went out for drinks. I took photos of Jessica. Dr. Decker did phone on Valentine's Day. And asked me for Nathan's number. There was a girl there. Am I wrong to keep the locket? I'm allowed to talk to her, aren't I? He was preoccupied with finding photographs, patterns, rocking chair. I haven't been back to the beach since. I had a bit of a shaky loop incident. Where I find something. I set fire. Beautiful. In the sea. To Hannah's clothes in the garden. I dug the grave. I wish I'd said goodbye. Dr. Decker, curse me. It didn't weigh enough to have a body in it. Hmm. Oh, Doctor, you surprised me. Reminds me of Officer Yates. Did I ever mention I had a special friend in the police force? Nah, it's not something you drop politely into a conversation. He's been doing some digging and he's found a couple things. Ooh, all right. There's a crime scene out, report that things. goes into all the gory details and another report that's about a patient you're seeing today, Claire. I'll put them both on the desk for you. And thanks for the grief counselling, by the way. It's really been helping, you know, I'm just... I'm so glad you're here. Act 3, Spiked. That doesn't sound good. I'm afraid to look directly at at the screen because I'm afraid there's gonna be another jump scare. <laughs> the arrest report says Claire killed David. I've underlined some things to ask her, but I wonder if Bryce buried David. What happened to Ben? I thought Bryce did bury David. Ask patients about the paper spike. Too much to do today. report Christian Weber at 2040 hours on Tuesday 8th November myself and PC Holt responded to a call received from a neighbor of the Bower House West Stone Park Avenue concerning a reported disturbance we arrived at the address and knocked on the front door but there was no reply we then examined the rear of the property and gained entry through insecure patio doors. We entered the property through this door and I announced myself by shouting police, but did not hear any response. 
We searched the premises. Upon entering the dining room, I found I saw a female seated next to a man who was laying on the ground. Oh, okay. This is this is when she stabbed him. Oh, did she die? I, I think. Oh, Claire did kill her husband. I think. Okay, let's keep reading. <laughs> I saw a female seed. The man did not appear to be conscious. Both persons were drenched in blood and there's a substantial amount of blood on the carpet, walls, and furniture. I noted what appeared to be a steak knife on the floor, which was also covered in blood. At this point, I asked the woman to put her hands on her head, which she did. PC Holt secured the female while I checked the man for signs of life, but found none. I asked the woman her name. She identified herself as, to me as Claire Castleford. I asked if she knew the dead man. She said it was her husband, David Castleford. I asked what had happened. She told me that she had killed him. Following a search by PC Holt, which revealed no other persons present at the house, I said to Castleford at 20.52 hours, you are under arrest on suspicion of murder. I then cautioned her and placed her in the back of the police car for transportation to Weston Park Police Station, where I relayed the circumstances of the arrest to PC 2354 Hill, who authorized her... Anyway, how do I go? <laughs> I don't know how to go up and down on here. Is that it? Well, I already knew you killed your husband. It's fairly obvious. Scene report. There must be a way to, like, scroll up and down on this, right? Hmm. Hmm. Trying holding down buttons, clicking different ones, space, arrows. Yeah, that's weird. Because crime scene report, cause of death, it automatically cuts off, which is annoying. Um, let's just read it first. Crime scene report summary. 14th of February, Dr. Decker, the victim was located in his office, seated on a chair behind the desk, soaked in blood with an obvious chest wound. So attacked from the front. Paper spike. 150 millimeters long, protruding from the approximate region of the victim's heart. Estimated from liver temperature measurements to be between 8.30 and 10.30. Note the vo victim's body was reportedly discovered at 10.20. So that doesn't cover the guy who found him. The guy who found him could have just called the police right away. Okay. Cause of death. Ex Sanguation due to punctuation in the left anterior descending coronary ar artery. Death would have occurred in minutes. I can't read anything after that. Trying a couple of buttons. It's strange I can't read the whole thing. Hmm. You killed David. That's what it says. Oh. I can see you're confused. The police say that David is dead, fatally wounded when I stabbed him. Be the the coroner says that David is dead. Everyone says that David is dead. There was even a funeral. But I know he's alive. David is a ghost? I assure you, David is not a ghost. I've touched him. Oh no. Delusions. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> it makes for interesting reading, doesn't it? I can tell you you're dying to ask me about it. Fire away. How could you have a funeral if David is buried dead? at Henley Church. You can go see for yourself. There's even a headstone. One of your other patients was a poor bearer. I never forget her face. You should ask him. Paul Bearer? Bryce, are you a Paul Bearer? Whatever the heck that is. I'm actually a classically trained Paul Bearer. There are a lot of health and safety considerations. Not everybody can do it. Well, properly at least. Occasionally I step in if the funeral director is short-shouldered. I do remember her face. She wasn't upset in the usual way. She seemed agitated. Her husband must have been a giant, the coffin was so heavy. I remember because aft portside sprained his ankle. 
that and he wasn't lifting correctly. In simple terms, I've got nothing to say. Okay, so you were at David's funeral and you helped. I've nothing interesting to say about that. Hmm. Let's go back to Claire. Did you intend to fatally wound him? wanted to have him? a talk about our relationship. Not something any married person wants to hear. He said he'd been so with Iris for about a him. year and that he loved her. He said he didn't love me anymore. Which I know is a lie. You don't just fall out of love with somebody. I reacted badly. I grabbed the nearest weapon I could find, which happened to be the steak knife, and stabbed him with it. There was so much blood. I instantly regretted it. So, I fixed him. Wait, he said port side, but his right shoulder hurts. Is that what that means? No. You have an interesting aura. Though. Oh, that's what he's rubbing right now? No. Sorry. Hmm. I find using nautical terms to describe the position of pallbearers fitting. Plus, most of them are three sheets to the wind. You know, drunk. Oh. Uh. Is that supposed to mean something? A liar. <laughs> you saying somebody else, though. Their port side hurt. Nothing about him, right? Like I'm actually a classically trained pallbearer. There are a lot of health and safety considerations. Not everybody can do it. Well, properly at least. Occasionally I step in if the funeral director is short-shouldered. I do remember her face. She wasn't upset in the usual way. She seemed agitated. Agitated. Her husband oh, must have been a giant. That. The coffin was so heavy. I remember because aft port side sprained his ankle. That and he wasn't lifting correctly. Um, agitated. I don't know what you're getting at. Claire was agitated. That means nothing to me. Yes, Vienna. Okay, she doesn't want to talk about that. Okay, how did you it fix it? It was about him? a week later. I brought David back to life. Not with voodoo. Not with virginal sacrifice. Giant, I maybe, yeah. Well, did it happen, and it did. Dr. Decker told me it was possible, but only if you're not buried. He says once you're in the ground, there's no coming back. But until then, you have a chance at resurrection. Oh no! <laughs> okay. I don't know. Giant, heavy. Don't know. Resurrection. We'll ask him the same things. Don't know. Okay. We'll ask her now. Yes, resurrection. But now that I've seen the results, I don't think there's anything holy about it. I think reanimation is more an accurate term. Like, I'm an evil necromancer raising things from the dead. Has anyone seen David besides you? Sorry. I don't know. <laughs> Probably not. What were the results of David's resurrection? I think his brain was already decaying during the week that he was dead. Important bits. So when I brought him back to life, I didn't heal him completely. Hmm. Just gave him life in the state he was in. I mean, he's hunting and killing things and trying to roast them on fires he can only light with matches, but that's about it. He's your basic Neanderthal. So I have a problem. I'm being charged with murder because the police don't know he's still alive and I can't get David to vouch for me for obvious reasons. I think it would raise quite a few more questions than answers. 
which is why I'm hoping that you'd be able to help me. Oh gosh. How can I help you? Considering the circumstances, I'd be grateful if you could see your way to declaring me temporarily insane at the time of the murder. To lessen my sentence. Because I'm not a killer. But I can't prove otherwise. But you did you kill him. You don't still him. think I'm a killer, do you? Doctor? You did kill him, though. Lady, like, even if you suddenly resurrected your husband, doesn't mean you didn't kill him to begin. You are a killer. At worst, it's manslaughter. I didn't mean to kill him. I just stabbed him a bit. And although he was dead for a week, I brought him back to life. Does this mean you won't help me? Was I temporarily insane? Oh, that's, that's a lot of pressure. patient was a pallbearer. Bryce was a pallbearer for David. Yeah. He's also a grave digger, I believe. Yeah, I already figured it was Bryce. Okay, that's fine. Temporarily insane? Also, who's Professor Warwick? Um, how do you know Bryce? Smuggling a body out of a funeral can be difficult. <gasps> unless you pay the right people. Oh my gosh, what? Hold on, Bryce. Smuggle a body? I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about, Doctor. Um, I saw Claire Castleford's oh. husband in the coffin myself before carrying him to the grave. He is in the ground. I'm sure it wouldn't take much for the police to get an order to have him exhumed. Just make sure it's done on Tuesday morning when I'm off. So he's... you. So he didn't get paid. He's saying that you didn't get paid by... Exhumed. Is that supposed to mean something? No. Sorry. Hmm. I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about, Doctor. I saw Claire Castleford's husband in the coffin myself before carrying him to the grave. He is in the ground. I'm sure it wouldn't take much for the police to get an order to have him exhumed. Just make sure it's done on Tuesday morning when I'm off. Hmm. I don't think, I don't think she paid him to do that. How are you doing? I've been to the lake house regularly, keeping an eye on David. I saw the girl again, the one I told you about. She was playing outside. I don't know, Doctor. Hmm, girl playing outside. I didn't speak to her this time. Something about her made me feel uneasy. I just watched her from the bedroom window. She'd caught a fish. She was holding it in her hands. I wasn't close enough to see, but for all intents and purposes, it looked as if the fish bit her. One, two, three, four, five. Once I caught a fish alive. Hmm. If he saw him, why did he say he must have been a giant? Yeah, good point. Let's see here. Bryce, Bryce. I'm actually a classically trained pallbearer. There are a lot of health and safety considerations. Not, not everybody, everybody can, can do it. it. <laughs> well, properly at least. Hold on, the shadows coming Occasionally in. I step in if the funeral director is short-shouldered. I do remember her face. She wasn't upset in the usual way. She seemed agitated. Her husband must have been a giant. The coffin was so heavy. I remember because aft port side sprained his ankle. That and he wasn't lifting correctly. <laughs> it sounds like... I actually... I think that he's lying. Yeah, you're totally right about that. He must have been a giant. Can I ask Claire how tall is David? I'm getting tired of all these questions. I'm getting tired of everything. Okay, so I do believe that she paid Bryce off. 
But I mean, if Bryce said initially, he's like, oh, he's heavy, he must have been a giant. And then I called him out about like... <sighs> yeah. Hmm. I don't know. Your notes. I should tell Claire Bryce says her husband is in the ground. Oh, okay. Yes. Well, that's what he would say, isn't it? True. Hmm. Yeah, no, she doesn't think that. I still don't know what to say about the temporarily insane thing. A paper spike is an odd thing to use as a weapon. I suppose if it went directly into the heart, it might work. Or through his eye, or perhaps through the air into his brain. Or was it just a frenzied, bloody mess of a murder? Do you know, Doctor? I don't know. Should I declare her temporarily insane or not? I'm gonna pass on that for right now. Let's just talk to Bryce. How are you today? Hello, Doctor. I've been thinking about our last session, and I just wanted you to know that I'm not a bad person. I, I know taking naked photographs is wrong. <laughs> But you don't know what it's yeah. like until you face the same temptation. I'm assuming you don't know what it's like. Do you have an extra hour, Doctor? Yes. No, that's messed up. No, I don't. Thank God for that. There's someone else in my hour. A hooded figure. Watching me and following me. I followed it too. Who is it? Who's the hooded figure? I don't know who it is. Oh, okay. My initial thought was that it was you. That I told you about my affliction and, and somehow you'd got it too. Now I think maybe it's the military or some organization that wants to use the hour themselves. Maybe it's Dr. Decker risen from the dead. Hmm. I need to talk to you about him. Dr. Decker. I'm surprised I haven't been approached earlier. Military? I mean, my skills and the military. Special ops would be a breeze, wouldn't it? Waltz in past everyone during the midnight hour. Get whatever you want and return to friendly soil. It also makes me think that they might already know all of that. And that they want to get rid of me in case I tell anyone else. Would you do something for me if... If they get me? What do you want me to do? I don't know. Would you do something for me? Sure. Would you tell Jessica I love her? Oh. She didn't really know me that well, but I did love her. And mm. also... There's a hard drive in the bottom drawer of my drinks cabinet. Is that where all the pictures are? Please destroy it. Please, don't look at it. Hmm. Can I get Dr. more? Dr. Decker frequently used that paper <laughs> spike on his desk as an example. As an example of what? I'm sure he did it with the other patients too. What? He'd make me look at it, touch the point to see how sharp it was. <gasps> He'd tell me that because I think it's sharp, it will hurt me. But if I thought it was nothing, it could pass right through my hand. That seems like a motive right there. You could be like, well, do you believe that this can hurt you, doctor? No, 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 no. Then just get stabbed. <laughs> I don't know. Jessica seems a little is obvious. a beautiful woman. Talking about Jessica. I've not spied on her since the incident we talked about. Oh, good. I'm glad. I have real feelings for her, Doctor. I just... We've never connected. Have you talked to Jessica? No, I guess she's not going to tell me anything about that. Um... 
I don't know what you're getting at. Hmm. What else can you tell me about Decker? I spied on Dr. Decker not long before he was murdered. I'm not sure I should tell you what I saw in his basement. What did you see in the basement? I'd been feeling uneasy with Dr. Decker for some time. Oh. I mentioned how he'd changed before. So I began spying on him at home. One night, the basement door was open and Decker was returning upstairs. I skipped past him and there she was, a girl. It was difficult to tell, it, it was dark and she was chained. <gasps> what? Chained? No. You have an interesting aura, Doctor. What, what did you do with the chain girl? I removed girl? the chains, dressed her, oh. and sat her in the police station. There's no evidence, though. No evidence of what he'd done. But she was free. I saved her. I'm not evil. I destroyed evil. Who is she? She'd have a good motive to kill him, it sounds like. Who... Wait, who was the girl? I've nothing interesting to say about that. That means nothing to me. Yes? Dang it. Okay, where'd you follow Whatever the Whatever it is figure? that's following me, it doesn't want to catch me yet. If I move towards it, it runs away. And when I follow it, I follow it past temptations. A bar brawl, an open till, an open bedroom window. Like, it's testing me. Hmm. I think that I'm becoming a good person, Doctor. I'm ashamed of some of the things I've done, but I'm getting better. The hooded figure, it's testing my morals. Judging hmm. me. For what? I don't know. Judging. In simple terms. Tell me about the bar brawl. I split the brawl up. Tell me about the open tell. I did nothing. I'm not stealing anymore. Okay, so these are like the tests. I looked in. Oh. Watching other people has somehow built into our genes, Doctor. There was an old woman in bed. I went inside. Her bed covers were smoking. I think she'd fallen asleep holding a cigarette. I took the covers and put them in the bath. She'd have died otherwise. And no, I didn't take any pictures. Oh, so you saved her. I don't know. Is there any other hints? Maybe he should try talking to Jessica. Thank it's you, true. Doctor. Thank you. It's nice you think I'm capable of such basic interaction with females. <laughs> but I'm nice. still in awe of her, really. Oh, uh, okay. So I'm just going to creep. It, All right. Good. I'm glad you're going to just think about it. How's your job going? I put my hand through a rusty nail at work today. It hurt like hell and bled like I'd been shot. I closed my eyes and thought, this isn't happening. The nail is just a worm and it will wriggle through me. When I looked back, can you guess what I saw? A worm? My hand had healed. <laughs> the nail had become a worm oh, and was wriggling in my palm. It was like a little miracle, like magic. Mm. I shouldn't really say miracle or magic. They're words that Dr. Decker used when he tried to get you to think things and make them real. But do you think it's real, Doctor? That magic is real? So it sounds like Dr. Decker is kind of just reinforcing with everybody that kind of like, um, what's it called? That, that one thing that became popular for a while, the, the secret, whatever you think can happen in actual life. My mom would love that when I was growing up. So whenever we'd go like, it's not a cult, don't worry. Whenever we'd go like, you know, to find a parking spot or something, she'd be like, Sierra, I want you to envision a parking spot and then it will appear. 
and I thought it was like the dumbest thing, but I would do it because she told me to. And then we'd like find a spot or if like we didn't find a spot to be like, oh, like you're not thinking of it enough or whatever. Um, not like a crazy person to drop it. But um, yeah, the secret was like a big thing in her life for a long time. And this is giving me like <laughs> my like my hairs on my arm are raising because it's reminding me of that a lot. Like thinking of something really hard can put it into existence. You're a little bit of Bryce and a little bit of Nathan. Yeah, I I really like Aileen still. Even though she says that she's a shapeshifter, I I like her a lot. She her actress is very like captivating to me. Um, what did you see when you looked? When into I your looked hand? back at my hand, it was healed. Look. See? Yeah, your hand looks fine, man. <laughs> you seem kind of crazy. Yes, magic is real, or no, magic is not real. Hmm. I mean, now I'm starting to think it is real. I haven't seen any proof of it yet, though, besides what these people are telling me. So maybe I should just tell them magic isn't real. It hasn't been proved that she's an old person killer yet, but I do admire the fact that she takes care of old people. Just on, like, the outwardly thing of it. Um, like a caregiver or whatever. That's a very valiant job. Just in general. Not particularly for this character. I might change my mind later. <laughs> Bryce says he took the girl in Decker's basement to the police station. Oh, thank you so much for the host, Captain Bacons. Welcome. Welcome to the stream. How have you been doing, by the way, Captain Bacons? Good, hopefully. I should tell Claire... Bryce said he took the girl in Decker's basement to the police station. Actually, yeah, let's ask about the police station. I don't know what you're getting at. Oh, okay. Girl to the police station. Is that supposed to mean something? Well, you just told me about it a second ago, but I guess it doesn't mean anything now. <laughs> I'm doing great. Th thanks for asking. Right now, I don't know if you know what this game is, but I'm playing uh, The Infectious Madness of Dr. Decker right now, which is kind of like a live action, as you can see here. Live action movie slash like um, murder mystery sort of thing. And I get to type in questions up here and ask them of people. The old doctor was murdered, so I've taken his place to try to figure out who murdered him. Um, I'm gonna say no magic then, is so real. it isn't. I envy you, doctor. I wish I could be so sure. All right, is there anything else I could ask you? Is there any other hints? Oh, it like went away so fast. Dang it. Okay, let's talk to somebody else in the meantime. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. And I'm doing a completely blind playthrough, so I don't know at all what is going on in this game. <laughs> um, how about we say, how are you today? A burned and his rocking chair. Oh, yeah. The day you moved forward. It was a good choice. Oh. I'm not sure I've got much left of hers now. I've burned most of it, or given it away, just to make the days move forward. Maybe you should start giving it away instead of burning There was a moment when I was attacking a Salvation Army bin. I gave in. Hmm. Do you know about the paper spike? I didn't notice Dr. Dr. Decker had a paper spike. I haven't really seen more than a foot in front of me since Hannah died. Hmm. Okay. So it seems like Dr. Decker never really talked to Nathan about the spike like he did with Bryce. I accidentally put Hannah's diary into a Salvation Army donation bin. They're like huge post boxes with a circular tray that makes sure things spill to the bottom. I tried to get in to get it back, but I gave up. How would you give a diary away to the Salvation Army? Did you read the diary? I read the last few weeks of Hannah's diary a while ago. I must have accidentally dropped in some clothes for the Salvation Army bit. Oh, ah. It's funny, because I wasn't going to read it. She said she'd fallen out of love with me. That she was going to break off the engagement. That she didn't love me anymore. I regretted it. Oh boy. What? I've told you. Oh dang. Oops. Hold on. Let me go back really quick. I've told you all I know about Dr. Decker. He started out good, then turned a bit crazy towards the end. When you start giving people more problems as a therapist, that's a bit crazy. Hmm. 
What do you regret? I regretted that I mourned for Hannah so long. I regret the grief. I regret all the days I slept through because of it. Had I known she didn't love me anymore, things would have been different. I I'm a bit angry now. If I had that day over again, I'd I may just still pull out in front of the driver. Wow, okay, that's a little dark. Um, hmm. Why was Decker crazy? I think crazy? they possibly cursed other people, a bit like he cursed me. Sometimes you could see he was bursting to tell me about it, but he couldn't. He was ecstatic with power. Hmm. What she's yeah, what he's saying basically, right, is that Nathan said that if he would have known that she didn't love him anymore, she would have he would have like killed her anyways in a car crash. But I don't know if that's actually what happened. If he had already read her diary before, but that's a definite po possibility though that he murdered her like on purpose. Um, how did Decker curse oh, you? Curse or well, remembered? I was hoping he'd forget. It's gonna sound crazy. Dr. Decker said I would never be able to move forward until I came to terms with my grief. Oh, so from this point on, I start to relive, relive the, the same day over and over again until I made something of it. I believed it. What problems did Decker give you? started out with depression. Now I seem to repeat days. Even if you don't believe the repeat days, and I clearly have extra mental health problems that he's given me. Yeah, the, the, what they all have in common is that they've killed someone. Yeah, huh. Um, yeah, I mean, Aline could have killed someone, Nathan could have killed his girlfriend, Claire definitely killed her husband. I don't know about Bryce, but he, he buries dead people. Mariana, though, she's just having blackouts, but I guess she could have killed someone in one of her blackouts. Very possible. I didn't want to believe him. I remember I said, you can't just say things and they happen. He laughed and laughed. I think he was going mad. He said he'd give me a demonstration. A demonstration? He held his hand outstretched and told me to look at the flame. There was no flame. And then there was. He was holding a flame in his hand that had come out of nowhere. And he tried to hypnotize me to make me forget it. Huh. Interesting. You remember the flame even though I he hypnotized you? I didn't forget seeing the flame. He wanted me to forget it. To forget it all, but I didn't. For whatever reason, he couldn't undo what he'd done. I was scared. I pretended like the hypnosis had worked. Why were you scared? I was scared what Dr. Decker would do to me if he found out I still knew. So I had to play along. Keep coming to the sessions. Pretend I hadn't seen what he'd done. It was awful because I was suffering through the same days over and over again. But I couldn't talk to him about it because he'd know. Dr. Decker's magic, I guess? Weird. Maybe Dr. Decker is Cthulhu. <laughs> Shall we talk about Hannah? Can we maybe not talk about Hannah anymore? Um, thanks for the dating advice, by the way. <laughs> dating advice from yesterday that I told you not to date anyone? Did you follow my dating advice? You told me not to look for anyone else until I was ready. Yeah. So I didn't. Okay, good. I've just been sitting at home, reading Hannah's diary. Great. Stewing. I thought you said you dropped I ordered a pizza. My girl delivered it. I thought you said you lost her diary. What? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. How did you read the diary if you lost it? Like, just recently. Lies! I need to keep track of all these lies. Why did Decker want you to He'd forget? He'd become bored of me. So I got much of my insight from calls or messages he'd take during our sessions. Ooh, that's interesting. I think because he hypnotized me, he didn't want to play with me anymore. So I got basic therapist. Wait, what's the basic therapist? He told me lots of people get depression. To become more active, see more people. Oh. And although he wouldn't always be there to listen, Jaya would be. Yeah, I talked to her quite a lot. 
I'm not sure how many days of that she'd remember. She seemed to care, which is more I can say for Decker. Oh. Did you kill Decker so you wouldn't have to suffer through repeat days? Or tell me more about the pizza girl. <laughs> it took a week of days to get that pizza girl to smile. And you know what did it? A tip as much as the pizza cost. So money does make you happy. Hmm. Well, I mean, he could maybe not be lying because he does have repeat days. So maybe he he's not lying. He just had a repeat day where he threw away the diary and then he didn't. So on his spare time, he is still reading the diary. I don't know. Getting myself confused here. <laughs> Did you kill Decker so you went to suffer through repeat days? I didn't days? kill Dr. Decker. I wanted to be as far away from him as possible. By killing him. I don't know who did. Hmm. Does you really believe money makes you happy? If I cared about money that much, I wouldn't be working at a supermarket. I'm just trying to care about something at the moment. Yeah. I feel you, boy. All right, I think I have a lot from him. Let's go to Claire. Oh, temporarily insane. I have to decide. I don't know if you guys want to help me with the decision. If I should declare Claire as... Declare Claire? Uh, as temporarily insane or not during her husband when she killed her husband? I think I'm just gonna say no, though. I mean, she is kind of crazy because she thinks her husband's still alive, but that sounds like a more of like a post when you kill somebody afterwards. Then you feel like guilty and stuff like that, and there could be post traumatic disorder because of that. Um, <laughs> temporarily. <laughs> Yeah, so I want to, I'm leaning towards saying no, she wasn't. Like, she just got out of control and stabbed her husband out of anger. I don't know if insanity has to do with it. She's definitely insane now, but I'm not sure how she was before this. I don't have any um, thing to compare it to. If I knew her before, then I would be able to say that, but it looks like I'm going to have to give her a, a decision. All right, let's go to Jaya. How are you today? I'm fine. I'm ready for my grief counseling. I emailed you Mariana's address. I don't know why you'd want it. I suppose you're going to start doing home visits now, like Dr. Decker? Wait. Mariana's address? I didn't want her address. Oh my gosh, Mariana. <laughs> why would I want Mariana's Doctor, address? if you don't want it, don't text me and ask for it. It's all right. I don't mind doing menial tasks for you. What? Someone has to do them. She did that. Hold on a second. Hold on. You asked Jaya. Hold on, hold on. Let me just mention her name. I really don't know. Your address. I don't know anything about oh that. How did that happen? Wait. Try again? Okay, okay. Let's just go back to Jaya and keep talking about it. Home visits? Yes, Dr. Decker started doing home visits for Mariana. He said she couldn't concentrate properly in his office. Oh. I hope you're not thinking of doing the same thing. I need you right where I can see you. Dr. Decker suggested home visits. I think he was probably checking up on his investment. You're not thinking of doing home visits, are you, Doctor? Wait, investment? Aren't we all your investments, Doctor? All the time, all the energy you've invested in us? Hmm. Seeing hey, how Rocket. we're doing, making sure we're growing correctly? Hmm. Sure, we're growing correctly. Weird. Are you spying on me? Checks and balances, Doctor. Somebody needs to be watching the watchman, so to speak. Make sure you're helping, not hindering. Oh, creepy. Um, was Dr. Decker helping or hindering? He probably did his fair share of helping and hindering. He was definitely helping in the beginning, but then seemed to lose sight of things. Hmm. 
So we like slowly went crazy. How did Dr. Decker I lose sight of things? I think he was so overwhelmed by the patients he was getting. His curiosity just got the better of him. There was a definite turning point. Turning point? Somewhere around the time Professor Alderby turned up. That seemed to unsettle him. And then we had a flood of extra weird patients. I think it was all too much for him. I think I misjudged him. I hope you deal with it better. Hmm. I don't know anything about that. Hell Derby. That's not something I know about. New patients? That's a strange question to- Okay, uh, shall we talk about grief today? Any news on Ben? I think that's all settled now. We are agreeing to pay Ben 5,000 pounds and he's agreeing not to say anything about what he saw. Hmm, what did Ben see? He thought he saw a creature coming out of Dr. Decker's mouth. But at least that's the reason he's Girl. given for not emptying oh, the bins no. that night. Either way, it's not the kind of publicity that we need. It's Cthulhu. Shiny, Cthulhu's happy, coming out of his mouth. People. Like an octopus person. What the heck? Such realistic graphics. <laughs> yep, that's it's, it's all real people. Oh my gosh, I got chills. So this is like multiple references to Cthulhu right now in like everything everybody's talking about. I don't know what it means though. Anything else about Some Decker? mornings I come into work and still expect him to be here. Sometimes it feels like he actually is here watching over me. Is that a good thing? We had a connection. It's gone now though. You can't have a connection with the dead, can you? Not for too long anyway. Hmm. Connection. Dr. Decker asked me to have dinner with him for Valentine's. I refused, obviously, because you don't sleep where you eat or something like that. But it was flattering, especially with competition like Mariana around. And then he died that night? Weird. I want to play this. I know. <laughs> Yeah, this game's pretty good. <sighs> I try to pick varied games for my channel. I, I do like m a little bit of everything. The only games I don't like are um, platformers and racing games. There's the only two games I don't like. Otherwise, I do try to play like a little bit of everything. I was at home on my lonesome doctor, like I said before. But he called you, that's so weird, and asked to go on a date with you, and that's the night he died. Mariana Sorry, I didn't mean I was competing. <laughs> I was happy Mariana was going out with him. I didn't want to be romantic with him. We had a stronger connection than that. Hmm. Why was it a stronger Dr. Decker connection? and I shared some philosophy. We'd both read The Cult of the Kinetic Mind and we agreed with a lot of what it said. Have you read that book, Doctor? In Cult of the Kinetic Mind, the author suggests that everyone is capable of psychokinesis and that the cult leaders specifically had these powers that turned their followers into disciples. It's not a fun read, but if you're into psychology, it's a blast. That sounds exactly like what's happening here. Like he was the cult leader and all of a sudden all of his patients started getting weird powers. Sounds just like him. Oh, what mic do I use? I use a blue... Oh, gosh. What is this thing called? Blue something. It just says blue on the front. I'd have to look it up really quick. Um, it's just like a blue blue microphone. Try looking that up. But it's just like a standard one. And then I added this uh, noise reduction like little thing on the top of it. So it didn't come like this. I had to add this part. I also have a, a microphone stand for it as well. What is it? Blue Yeti. Thank you. My goodness. <laughs> My memory is bad, so of course I am a detective. Um, yeah, Blue Yeti, exactly. And it's I, I really like it. I used to be I used to use a 
headset for my uh, speaker, which wasn't too bad either. Headphones aren't as bad for audio quality as you might think, at least the one that I had, which don't even ask me what kind of <laughs> headset that was. I'd have to do a lot of digging for that. Psychokinesis is the ability to change the physical world without actually touching it, just by using your mind. It's not just about bending spoons. It covers all sorts of things like telepathy, telekinesis, telesabalas. Shoot me, I'm a Kojak fan. <laughs> like I said, all those cool things are in Cult of the Kinetic Mind, apart from Kojak, obviously. If you ever get a patient who thinks they can change the world with just their mind, then duck, just in case they can. But seriously, do a whole load of shrinking and make them better. Whether you believe in psychokinesis or not, hmm. you'll need to figure out your approach with those that do. Interesting. Okay. Uh, let's see, is psychokinesis common? No, not at all in my experience. Dr. Decker had an unusual number of patients who claimed psychokinesis. Either he'd been specifically looking for them or someone had been sending them. Does that mean some of them will respond if I say psychokinesis? I'm not trying to hide anything. I just don't... No, I guess not, huh? Does. All right. Um, why would someone send psychokinetic patients It's here? entirely possible that someone is targeting this practice with psychokinetic patients. To what end, I don't know. It's no coincidence that most psychokinetic patients are diagnosed as insane, or at least temporarily insane. It's a handy diagnosis if you're facing criminal prosecution. Especially if it's for murder. Alright, that's very specific. Uh, do you have anything to say about Claire? You're overthinking things. You don't need to ask me that. Nope. Ask me another. Hmm. Lurks in the shadows. Alright, Max. <laughs> you can go ahead and lurk. Oh, nice! I didn't even know Best Buy sold them. I buy everything off of Amazon, so I don't have to leave the house. <laughs> also, Amazon seems to be cheaper in most cases um, where I live in SoCal. Uh, shall what approach? How I guess? do you make people who think they have special powers better? Do you remain passive and support, encourage them, take them away? Be passive, encourage their powers, remove their powers. Passive, I guess, but that doesn't really help them. Encourage if they, if they think deep they could help people. Affliction? Oh, I wouldn't. It's hmm. not really what I meant. Um, let's see, paper spike. It's in that, that police Dr. report Decker. that I gave to you. You should really take a look at it. I read it. I read it, girl. <laughs> uh, shall we talk about grief today? Grief is such a strange word if you keep saying it. Grief, 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 grief. 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 It sounds like somebody's being whipped. Are you going to ask me how I feel today? Yes. How do you feel today? Uh. How do you feel today? Fell today. Oh, I already asked her. Okay. How about, did you talk to Nathan much? I didn't really speak to Nathan that much at all. But I have this strange feeling that I know him really well. I can't quite put my finger on it. That's scary. <laughs> because he thinks that, or he says that she, he knows Jaya very well as well. Um, what do you know about Dr. Decker's mother? Dr. Decker did send me to see his mother once. She was dying in a nursing home and he didn't want to see her. I remember him calling her a manipulative, evil old hag. You tend not to ask any more questions after that. Oh, hold on a second. Ellen, Dr. Decker's mo mother. I don't know. Sorry. All right, Ellen, whatever. You can lie to me, girl. I know you probably know 
who do who Dr. Decker's mom is. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because Ellen works with dying old people. I tried to make the connection, but she was like, nope. Um. Sorry, I wish I could. Okay. Uh, why does grief sound like being whipped? Oops, that was a strange thing to say, wasn't it? Whipped. Am I all whips and chains in the bedroom or dominant in the boardroom? Don't answer that, it's not a question. It's early days for a harassment suit yet. What with Ben's nervous shock already. Hmm. Why couldn't Mariana concentrate in the Honestly, office? Honestly, I think Dr. Decker had a bit of a crush on Mariana, or vice versa. I'm not really sure. There's some footage from their home sessions if you want to see them. Yes, sure. That's kind of weird, but sure. Yeah, show me the phone. That was a joke, Doctor. I guess we found our level. <laughs> <laughs> it was a joke? What? Dang it. I thought you actually had something. Which of my patients claims psychokinesis? Okay. Most of the patients you're seeing have claimed some kind of psychokinesis. Yeah. If you don't think that's the case, then they just haven't told you yet. Yep, yeah, I, I do think that's the case. <laughs> it's fairly obvious. Oh yes, this game is on Steam. I've, I think it's like $15 or something? Or maybe more than that? Something like that. <laughs> um, who else should we go to? Let's go to Ellen. Eileen. I always say Ellen. I mean to say Eileen. Uh, do you know about the paper spike? It's true then. I'd heard Dr. Decker was stabbed, but I didn't know for sure. I thought I told you on the first day. That whoever did it would choose the paper spike. <laughs> Why is it weird? Dr. Decker used to play with it in our sessions sometimes. You know, pick it up, handle it while we talked. I remember once... He pushed the spike through his skin. Yet this bit, here, between his thumb and his finger. He said he didn't think I'd mind the sight of blood being a nurse and all that. But what the heck? Actually, there wasn't any. That's weird. That is very strange. Why isn't there any blood? I was a bit freaked out. At first, I thought it was a trick. A magic trick, you know? Like some kind of therapeutic test. Show the patient this retractable spike and see how they react. But it wasn't. The spike was real. Hmm. The shape-shifting de detective. Over. Oh, yes, I have heard of that game when I was doing re a little bit of research on this one. Yeah, I heard that this one was the best one as well. How are you today? I'm fine. Works fine. Hilda's fading fast. Terry's... Terry. Oh, you'd be pleased to know I don't have the locket anymore. Oh, good. I gave it back. All of it. Every single keepsake. Aw, oh, that's nice. I'm glad. Why'd you give the locket you back? You told me to. <laughs> well, not in so many words, but you said I shouldn't have kept them. And what with Terry going around telling everyone I stole them, I didn't feel like I really had any choice. The locket, the watch, the ring. But I kept the little bird Sarah Decker gave me. I wasn't supposed to mention her. Ha! Ha ha! It's his, it is his mom! I knew you knew Sarah Decker! Dr. Decker's mother. She was one of my first patients. I knew it. She died a while ago. She did not like her son. I mean, he did not like her. his mom, I should say. Hmm. Wait, what did she just say? That... Dr. Decker's mother. She was one of my first patients, but she died a while ago. Hmm. Hilda's nearing the end. She's been sleeping a lot, not eating much. She hasn't been that argumentative either. Although, she did give me a vicious scratch yesterday. Oh. Scratch? It was nothing. I was just trying to give her meds. 
It's hard, you know? I'm trying to help her, but she keeps fighting me. It'll be better after she's seen her daughter. I've decided I'm going to do it tonight. She hasn't got much time left. I've got her on a herbal compound. Um, St. John's wort for pain, ginkgo for bronchitis, uh, valerian, uh, borage. There's a few other things in there as well, but I won't bore you with the full ingredients. Interesting. Yeah, trying to help her. It sounds like she doesn't want it though. I kind of feel bad for the lady. It was nothing. I was just trying to give her meds. Meds. It's hard, you know? I'm trying to help her. She's fighting, fighting you. That doesn't really matter. Let's talk about something else. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Why is she fighting you? Okay. How do you know the spike was Dr. real? Dr. Decker gave me the paper spike to try. It wasn't fake. <laughs> it was pretty sharp, actually. I don't know how he did it. He said he just thought that it wouldn't hurt him, so it didn't. Hmm, so it is kind of like the computer simulation sort of thing. One of the characters said that there's a computer simulation um, kind of theory that goes around that life is just a computer simulation and there's just somebody mashing up the keys. And then it did this weird thing where the screen was back a little bit and then he was asking me if I was on the keyboard. And he's like, I don't actually want to know the answer to that. But it was like really like weird. <laughs> you know the answer to that, Doctor. Shape shifting. What have we been talking about? What can I do for Hilda? that will make it all better. Shapeshift, you can shapeshift. Are you gonna kill Hilda? You're gonna pretend to be Hilda's daughter. That's the plan. Yep. I know, it sounds her. unbelievable, uh, like I'm making it yeah. up. Yeah, that's really what happened, it's crazy. I wish I could prove it to you somehow. And then we were stuck in a loop um, as well for a little bit. We could bit. try shifting now. Oh yes, I'm ready. Uh, think of someone you really love. It might help if you close your eyes. I'm scared. Are you thinking of them? Oh, I'm scared. <laughs> okay. Hold on. I can't. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I'm so scared. I saw different faces on her face. <sighs> Sorry. I don't think it's gonna work. On the bright side, that probably means you're not gonna die anytime soon. Oh, great. I'm glad. All right. I saw a couple of faces in there. That was scary. Or at least just one that superimposed on her face. All right, what do you say when it's you shift? Tricky. I mean, I'll sound exactly like Hilda's daughter, but I try and keep it vague because I don't become her. I don't know what she would really say. I, I say things like, it's okay, don't be scared. I love you, mom, or I love you, dad. But it doesn't really matter what their relationship's like because it's not really them. I always do the Disney version. The best, most loving version. That's what my patients want to hear. Hmm. And maybe deep down they know it's not the truth, but it's got to be better than the reality. Why bother shifting a parent? Patients know Does it really truth. matter if it isn't the truth? Isn't it worth it if it brings them peace? Tell me honestly, doctor. Do you really think that what I'm doing is wrong? Yes. Is only going to pretend to be Hilda, Hilda's daughter? I don't know. I think that's I think that's pretty messed up. <laughs> Especially if, like, what you're saying isn't something they would actually say and then, like, the person's like, oh my gosh, like, this wouldn't actually happen. Like, what if it went wrong? That would be really messed up. So even if it goes right, I still think there's... I still think it's messed up because you're lying to them, essentially. Or you are lying to them. 
Better, better to live in reality all the way, man. All the way. I'm gonna say yes. So That's you're wrong. saying I should let Hilda die without seeing her daughter one last time? I don't know. Why doesn't her daughter come visit her? I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Let Hilda die alone. <laughs> no! Oh my gosh. That's so, like... That's like a moral choice right there. <laughs> No, I under I understand your your point of view, Kai. It's not like I, I don't understand the other side as well. I mean, if you put it like like these two options here, let Hilda die alone sounds very mean. So whatever. Just Good. Do what because you I want. really feel this is something I have to do, like it's my calling or something. All right, go for it, girl. You go for it. How's Terry? Terry seems to have backed down since I gave the keepsakes back. Good. All right. Actually. It doesn't seem like she's been very Oh, well. no. Not her usual self. What's wrong with Terry? Maybe she's got a bug or something. Oh, yeah. I'm sure you didn't give her the bug or anything. Why is Why did you say I'm not going to die soon? As far as I know, it only works on people who are close to death. Oh, That's interesting. That's the whole point of it. I have to hold their hand, and they have to think of the person, and they have to be near death. And those seem to be the three criteria. Hmm. Why didn't you want me to know about Sarah? It just makes things complicated, doesn't it? I knew Dr. Decker's mother before I started seeing Dr. Decker. She's dead, and now he's dead. I'm sure you're gonna have a field day with it. Maybe. <laughs> um, hmm. Did you know Sarah Decker with Dr. Decker's yeah, mother? that's the reason I came to see him. I knew she was dying, but he refused to talk to me unless I booked a session, so I did. And well, here we are. What happened after that? Sounds like he still didn't go see his mom. I told Dr. Decker that his mom was dying, that he should see her before it's too late. But he wasn't interested. Aw, that's kind of sad. It wasn't like he hated her. It was just like, it wasn't important. He asked me to take care of it for him. He did send his assistant along to see her once. Sorry, your assistant. Some mornings I come into work and still expect him well, to let be me see here. This. Sometimes it feels like he actually is here, watching over me. We had a connection. It's gone now, though. Can't have a connection with the dead, can you? Hmm. No, that nursing home. Did she shift into Decker to help Sarah? That's what I was wondering too. Let's see if we can ask her. All Dr. Decker did was encourage me to think. But the shifting, that's all me. And my mum's a psychic. She's just thinking I'm asking in general. Empath, but I was just ordinary. I always felt like I wasn't special. Mom and sister. Like I was missing out. Hmm. But I wasn't. I just hadn't discovered what I could do yet. Sarah Decker was one of the first ones I tried shifting for. Oh, here we go. Who did you shift into for Sarah? I didn't really know what I was doing that first time. I mean, I didn't actually expect anything to happen. I just thought, what would really help this woman? I thought maybe she would just imagine that he was there. Mm -hmm. But it actually yeah. happened. I changed into him, Dr. Decker. It blew my mind. Wow, okay. Um, so she did turn into Dr. Decker. Hmm. Yeah, yep, the plot that you have to find out is who killed Dr. Decker. And these, there's a list on the left here. All of these people are Dr. Decker's, are like, patients at the time of his death. He died on Valentine's Day. So he died Valentine's Day evening, and we have all of these patients. They all have something in common, which they all cr claim to have psychokinesis. Psychokinesis, my goodness. 
So Nathan, what Nathan can do is he, he gets stuck in time over and over again. So he gets stuck. He relives the same day over and over again, like Groundhog Day. Mariana has blackouts. Eileen can turn into people. Claire can see the dead primarily, or she resurrects the dead. She claims she resurrected her husband. Bryce. What's Bryce again? <laughs> Hold on. Bryce is the last one. He... Oh, he has an extra hour. So he has 25 hours in a day. At midnight, he claims that time stands still and he can do anything he wants in that hour. Anyways, they all think that they have these abilities. But I did experience Nathan's, like, repeating a day because we had a sequence near the beginning of the game where we had to say the right thing in order to keep the day going. And he kept, like, at least or three times for me, the same thing happened with Nathan. So I got stuck in his loop as well. So, yeah, I feel like they all might actually be suffering from what they think they are, but that's just a hunch. And then they keep men mentioning the Cthulhu and stuff like that and cults and whatnot. So I feel like Dr. Decker also, the patient said that Dr. Decker could do some weird things like put a spike through his hand and no blood would come out or summon a flame or something like that. So it sounds like Dr. Decker might have been magic <laughs> or everyone's just crazy, which is also a very big possibility. Um, let's see. Who was I talking to? <laughs> I think I was just talking to Aline some more. What did Dr. Decker mean by take it care of It was about the second, third session we had. He said he could tell that I was a good person, that I wanted to help people, and that I should think really hard about how I could do that. Mm -hmm. That's how I discovered shifting. So it seems like Dr. Decker pushed every all of his patients to like have these powers. He made them really think about it. So that explains the title, The Infectious Madness of Dr. Decker. His he spread this madness to everybody else and made them believe that they had powers. They weren't like this when they came. How's your mom? My sucking? mom's got these spirit guys and they tell her things. Mostly about my love life, it would seem. <laughs> That's funny. Oh my, can I ask about your love life? Ask me something else. That one's a dud, I feel ya. I feel ya, sister. Okay, what's an empath? To tell you the truth, I don't really know what an empath is. It's when somebody can feel another person's time. emotions. By just being, like, around them. Apparently that's, like, what her sister is. How about any other family? I feel like you're... No? Okay. Is there a hint? I wonder if the bird is significant. Bird. It was just a little china bird, sort of yellowy blue pattern on it. I don't think it's worth anything. Who gave you the bird? No, oh, okay. Hmm, we'll come back to her later. All right, Claire, the lady who killed her husband. Oh, right, right, right. I have to declare her temporarily insane or no? I'm gonna say no. You're crazy now, but I, I don't think when you stabbed your husband out of anger, you were insane. You were just really angry. I'm going to pretend that I didn't hear that. Let's have a few more sessions before you seal our fates. Or is it that you want something else? Like Dr. Decker did. What? Want something else? Dr. Decker teased me mercilessly about my alleged ability. He didn't believe I'd reanimated David. Once, he presented me with a dead mouse and commanded me to give it life again. I didn't, of course. It's not something I'd throw around lightly. He changed his mind about me eventually. And then he mentioned the girl. The girl. What girl did Decker mention? He told me he'd locked up a girl in the basement of his house. Okay, just that's what for somebody me. else said. And he asked me to reanimate her. It was Iris. <gasps> I said I couldn't reanimate something that wasn't dead. Oh and my god! He said that wouldn't be a problem. So I agreed. I just played along. I was hoping it wasn't real. Oh I assumed goodness. it wasn't real. But he was offering me what I wanted. A temporary insanity diagnosis. What? Claire says the girl in Decker's basement was I basement was iris and bryce said he was there the girl iris. who was chained in the basement her name is iris mm-hmm yep how do you know that 
Not that it means anything. She wouldn't remember me anyway. Time was frozen. Did Iris die? Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So supposedly Bryce said during his extra hour when everyone else was frozen except him, he saved Iris from Dr. Decker's basement. No, he just said it was a woman. And he, he moved the woman to the police station, which apparently was Iris. Did you help Iris? It didn't happen. Dr. Decker called me from his house to cancel. He was furious. So she just disappeared. He said that Iris had escaped and he blamed me for it. He said that I must have set her free after he told me about her. I knew it was all lies anyways. He was obviously titillating himself by reprimanding me. He knew I'd never want to speak to Iris again, so I couldn't prove it either way. That's so creepy. Okay, what changed Decker's Dr. Decker mind? Dr. Decker asked if I could prove David wasn't dead, so I took him to the lake house. He saw that I was telling the truth. I can take you to see him too, if you like. Would you like to see David? <coughs> oh my gosh. Yes? I, mean, I kind of want to turn on the light. I'm getting all spooked. All right, it's still daytime though, so hold on. Let me let me open up the blinds a little bit. I'm getting a little spooked, guys. I ain't gonna lie. Oh yeah, yeah. You're confusing with the girl that Claire saw. That was a different girl. A girl that reminds me her of herself when she was a child. So maybe that is just her as a child. Who knows? All right, sure. I'd like to see David. Very well. In our next session. Oh. What do you mean in our next session? She's just gonna bring her reanimated uh husband that's like lost half of his mind oh that's gonna be very scary <laughs> okay do you know anything about the paper spike of course i saved mariana for last because i know she's gonna be flirting with me the entire time you've got a good memory doctor oh oops i picked the other one let's talk dreams it's talking about the ocean Sometimes saw something I'll beautiful dream in it about a light okay deep in the ocean somewhere Cthulhu. I head towards no. it because it's <laughs> zombie warm David. Yep, and glowing like a beacon. And when I'm at the bottom, it's the most beautiful thing. Like, like a welcoming sun. Like I'm home. And then I wake up. Interesting. Oh wait, hold on. Let me see if I can ask Claire one more thing. I just want to type in the hint. What happened when Dr. Decker ma met David? Oh, good question. I think it was a mistake taking Dr. Decker to see David. Uh-oh. Dr. Decker wanted to examine him, so they went into a different room. I wasn't worried. David wouldn't speak. But Dr. Decker seemed very distant after that. He didn't say a word on the way back. Oh my gosh, that's terrifying. <laughs> All right. Great. I'm going to meet him and then I'm probably never going to speak again either. Yes, it is really intense. <laughs> the music doesn't help. Or it does help with the intenseness, but it doesn't help with making me feel any better. Do you know anything about the paper spike that Dr. Decker was killed Dr. with? Dr. Decker used to put my checks on that thing. I guess oh. someone thought they weren't getting value for money. Part-timer. I actually don't have a lot of money. Well, what a surprise. Sometimes no, a therapy kidding. check would bounce, no. but Dr. Decker would be okay with it. Oh. oh, my checks are fine, though. Don't worry. They're fine now. Wait, what's your job again? I don't know about that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you don't. Uh, do you have money problems? I'm not broke. Men buy me drinks at bars, though. Even Sometimes though I'll get away with drink. not paying at restaurants. Isn't that how it is for everybody? Ugh, I don't- she's like my least favorite character, because she's like one of those people who are like, Oh, am I pretty? And then like, obviously, they like use their looks to like get free stuff. Oh my gosh. How are you today? I'm okay. A little backtracking a little bit. Thanks for asking. And she's always flirting with me, which it's is annoying. rent day, and I always feel a little blue on rent day. Oh, same. 
<laughs> Relatable, though. Rent day is the day I pay rent to my landlady. Thanks for explaining that. Who's your landlady? I pay my rent to a landlady. I don't own my own place. I'm, I'm just passing, passing through. through. Oh, right. She sells bracelets online. I, I remember now. I never stay in one town very long. I get bored too easily. But she always stays by the Once beach, you've it seen sounds the like. same faces over and over again, you move. Like I said before. You're like a gypsy. I like to move around a lot. I think I am getting it. Um, I don't know. Okay, we'll drop that. Uh, do you often go to bars and restaurants? I mainly like drive throughs I don't like crowds, and you said you I find to it bars difficult to stay in the same place for too long. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm a fidget. But she said that she went to dance clubs a lot, like just the other day. You will. How could she? Oh, she hates crowds, but she just told me that she went to dance. Oh, here we go. You dislike crowds but visit nightclubs. Thank you. Crowds at nightclubs and bars are different. Oh, okay. The lights are dim. You can slink around without attracting too much attention. That's creepy, but okay. <laughs> Why slink? Sometimes I'll kiss a guy in a club, and then he just follows me. Wherever I go, it's creepy. I don't want everyone seeing that. Hmm. Yeah, guy, guys buy her drinks, but she doesn't drink. Yeah. Dr. Decker went to her house, but they weren't dating. Yeah, everything, a lot of the things that she says are very contradictory. Um, where do people they follow you? Follow me. Wherever I go. And they take you to the beach? No, I'm just kidding. Anywhere. Do they turn Why like do you mindless? Think they follow me, doctor. That's weird. Your house? Is that a rhetorical question? Your house. I think they follow you to your house. And they be creeping. No. Nope. No? Okay. Uh, what happens after people follow you? It depends where they follow me. If they follow me home, they bang on the door for an hour or so, then leave. That's creepy. Other places, they just disappear. I don't see them again. Bang on your door? I don't know. Disappear. Well, they don't just disappear <laughs> into thin air. Oh, okay, I think good. they return to I'm the glad. place I found them. Oh. But I've not run into the same person twice. Try again. Mariana wants me to guess where people follow her. What happens after they follow her? People follow you to your... But people follow you to your house. You already told me that. Yes. Yeah. They follow me home. Creepy. They're... Silent. It's like a trance. They're in some kind of trance, like zombies. I don't know what they want. I don't know. I mean, she has blackouts, and now she's saying that after she kisses a guy, like, they follow her around like a zombie. I'm thinking maybe those two are really, and when she does blackout, they bring her to the beach or something? I don't know. It sounds like maybe, like, like a slave sort of thing, maybe. She says that the beach is her favorite place, right? I don't know how she ends up naked, but... I don't know. Maybe she like makes them into her mindless zombies and then they take her to the beach because they know that she likes the beach. That sounds kind of weird though. Have you had any more blackouts? I've had no blackouts and I haven't been to the beach since our last session. But I think I will today. Oh. Do you want to come with me to the beach? Um. Maybe someone should come with you to the beach. Doctor, I think you're getting a little anxious. If you ever wanted to visit the beach, you can just turn up. It's not mine. All right, weirdo. Uh, why a it's beacon? It's so beautiful. 
This is back to the ocean thing she's talking about in her dreams. It's like I'm in a trance. What does the dream mean, Doctor? Hmm. Is she a mermaid or a siren? I mean, it sounds like it, right? Um, maybe the dream is symbolic. <laughs> maybe the dream is made up. Maybe the dream means you're searching for something. Yeah. I guess. I hate being in the same place for too long. Maybe I'm always searching for paradise or something. That's what I think. You're okay with men buying you it's drinks? It's just good manners to accept when someone offers to buy you a drink. I'm a very good-natured girl. Why are you good-natured? Don't you think I'm sweet, Doctor? No. Can I say no? Oh, do you really want to know what I what I have to say, even though you're paying paying me for the the psychiatry? Okay then. Oh, I'm so mean. I just wanted to see what you'd say. Oh joy. Oh boy. Oh joy. I was gonna say. She's totally gonna hate me now. Mariana's dream could mean anything. A metaphor for a current issues, searching for something, or maybe she's making it up. Can I say you're making it up now? I. Oh, no, I can't. I had to choose. All right, and then, and I did. All right. Do they follow you to bed? There was one guy. A real gym buddy. I let him into the bedroom, but nothing. Oh. Nothing I did would stop him just that staring at me. It was creepy. Yep. I uh, got him to follow me outside, and then I just shut the door. She's never seen the same guy twice. Talk to me about Decker. Are we still talking about him? And I thought you were just interested in me, Doctor. Yes, I'm thinking of doing home visits. No, I'm not thinking of doing home visits. That sounds horrible. That's good. I'm not sure I can afford any more of your time. Practitioner. Achievement. Nice. What else could we ask her about? Dang it! The the hint pops up and then it goes away really fast. Um, is there anything else we could ask anybody? We got all the important stuff out of the way. How's it possible David was brought back to life? You tell me. What could possibly explain that? Magic. I'm afraid I don't know the answer to that. Hmm. Is David not human? Are you lying about David being alive? Are you lying about never seeing Decker outside your sessions? <laughs> How astute, Doctor. Yes, I did say I hadn't seen Dr. Decker outside of our sessions. That wasn't a lie. Our trip to the lake house was made during a session. Oh, okay. All right. If David doesn't exist, then that means that I really did kill him. He really is buried, and I really should be going to prison for a very long time. That just doesn't seem right to me. It's more probable that I reanimated him under Dr. Decker's guidance. What? It's more probable? Excuse me? Since I brought him back, I felt that there was something different about him. Something not quite right. I think it's his brain. But how ludicrous that you can bring someone back in the first place. It's like that book, Pet Cemetery. Funnily enough, he does smell of earth, but that's because he spends most of his time out hunting. Hmm. Try asking me some What happened to Iris? I need to talk to other patients more than check my notes. Well, I know what happened, Iris. She made it back to the police station, right? Does he know what happened after? Uh, I don't think anybody else would really know about it. I'm gonna double check, though. I don't know anything about yeah. You've asked me that already. No. Wait. I don't know everything. I know. 
Professor Warwick is new. I have no idea who this person is. Hello? Uh, uh, Professor Warwick, I'm a physicist. Where's Dr. Decker? Decker's dead. Is he really? Actually, dead? Hmm? Not a worthy adversary after all, then. What a weirdo. Dr. Decker challenged me. He tried to use my theories against me. Uh, quantum theories. Hmm. Theories. <laughs> Maybe if you ask me that in a parallel universe. What theories? Do you really want to know? Decker's eyes used to glaze over whenever we talked about that. He uh, didn't believe in quantum physics. As if it's something that you can optionally believe in. Well, it started with an experiment. Experiment. Have you heard of quantum suicide, Doctor? Quantum suicide is a, is a thought experiment that tries to explain the many worlds theory. Uh, you're looking at me blankly. I can see that you don't understand. I, I, I knew you wouldn't. Uh, alternate universes. Essentially, if I were to shoot myself, then in some alternate universe, I'd still be alive. Mm. Now imagine if I could actually choose that universe. I'm like taking a product off a supermarket shelf. Like Dr. Decker well, could choose that, that universe where he's not different. dead. Would you play that Gambling. logic to? I set up an experiment whereby I would visit a casino and place a very large bet at the roulette table. Now, I would always bet on odd. Now, the results of this particular experiment were mundane. I won as many times as you would expect according to the laws of probability, but then, I changed a parameter. Why gambling? Why not gambling? My wife, Vanessa, left me for a neurosurgeon. Oh, so I didn't need she to She emptied our entire combined wealth into her barrister's wallet. <laughs> I needed more money. Physics oh. provided me with a solution. Neurosurgeon. No, I... Affair. Do you know, you remind me of Dr. Decker. <laughs> oh gosh, don't tell me that. Um, I don't know, do you know the sim theory? Nope. I, I mean, simulation theory? Perhaps so. <laughs> okay, I don't think there was anything out of that. Okay, uh, tell me about your wife. We were married for 14 years, 7 months, and 3 days. Vanessa couldn't have children, at least that's what she told me. She grounded me in reality. Vanessa. I'm not complaining. It's probably what I needed. But part of me always thought that one Vanessa, day reality I'd achieve immortality through science and beauty. It wasn't to be, though. Are you sure that question? I don't know. You're the one who talked about immortality. I... Okay, okay. Did it bother you that you couldn't have children? Well, yes, it bothered me. Especially now that I find out that she's pregnant. Oh, oh. No, it wasn't a rocket scientist that was required, but a brain surgeon, it seems. I have considered putting that neurosurgeon onto his darkest timeline. But I'm not a killer, it would seem. Do you, know, you remind me of... What parameter did you change? Quantum suicide required a, a loss of life to make it a realistic thought experiment. So I simply upped the stakes. Now, every time I bet on odd, I would uh, place everything I had on that one spin of the wheel, and it worked for a while. Why did the experience start working? Dr. Decker killed it, and I can't. Get it back. Well, my theory, quantum gambling. If the stakes are high enough, you will win every time by simply shifting your consciousness into that branch that wins. It's tricky, but it can be done. 
<laughs> Dr. Decker didn't like that. He saw me becoming rich and powerful, and he hated that. That's why he proffered the hangman's paradox. Why would Decker hate you becoming Honestly? rich and powerful? Well, I think he feared quantum physics. He didn't like things being explained in terms of science. Almost as if he'd have preferred chaos. Yeah, chaos and order. Yep, because he's the leader of the Cthulhu cult. <laughs> That's my working theory. Uh, what's the hangman's paradox? Well, uh, imagine a judge sentences you to death. Now, it will be Monday or Tuesday next week. But it will be a surprise. Well, oh. Which day do you think you'll be executed? Neither. Can I say neither? No, I'm... <laughs> okay, let's just say to a Monday to get the day started. Well, Monday does seem likely, yes. Because if you're still alive on Monday at midnight, then Tuesday won't be a surprise. But if you're sure that it's Monday, then that won't be a surprise either, will it? Decker tricked me. How did he trick you? He told me that sometime in the future I would lose a bet. That, that I would lose all of my money. Now, this didn't seem likely because I had quantum gambling on my side and it was working. But he unnerved me. He, uh, he made me doubt myself. And then it happened. Recently, I lost like everything that I'd managed to build up since Vanessa left me. I uh, was at a fundraiser for a charity called Mind Stretch Outreach. Don't know how I got roped into that, I can't remember. But it was full of uh, very clever children with bizarre outlooks on life. And Jaya. It was Jaya who asked me to go. <gasps> Wait a second. Warwick. I don't know. Wait, what do you mean Jay asked you to go? How old do you know Jay? Oh, she's Dr. Decker's lovely assistant. <laughs> I, I imagine she's your lovely assistant now. Oh my gosh. Yeah, she always uh, smiles and makes me a cup of tea before a session. <laughs> that smile. Uh, which reminds me, um, my session. Can we talk about my problem now? Wait, what do you think of Warwick? Have you been taking notes in our session, Doctor? Hmm. What did you do at home? Oops. Oops, did I skip over it? I'm a bit of a bookworm. I'm one of those annoying, constantly self-improving, overachieving types. Takes one to know one, eh, Doctor? Now, what's the event that he said that you two were at together? Professor Warwick. Valentine's Day. I was at home on my... Oops. Oh, she's... I uh, was at a fundraiser Mind for a charity called... Mind Stretch Outreach. Mind Stretch Outreach. I don't know everything. Really? He's full of poor kids with uh, very capable minds. I, I did give them a talk on quantum tunneling once, and uh, they loved it. Not sure it'll put dinner on the table for any of them, though. Mm. <laughs> Maybe if you ask... Okay, let's ask what's quantum tunneling. Oh, you're going to have to Google that, Doctor, I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm not a walking Wikipedia. Sorry, I thought I'd love you to were. Tell you, but, um... I am paying you by the hour. Maybe look up Schrodinger's cat whilst you're there. <laughs> Perhaps. <so. laughs> All right, let's talk about your problem. I, I'm not a gambler, Doctor. I'm a scientist. I feel like you are a gambler I now. I need more money. It's true, I've run out of money for my research. An opportunity has arisen. What is your opportunity? 
Oh, what research? Uh, quantum gambling. Oh. Uh, it's a pet project. It's got nothing to do with work. But if I don't have significant amounts of money to lose, then there won't be enough jeopardy for the experiment to work. Sounds like you're just addicted to gambling. Who do you work for? The Ministry of Defense, of course. Guns aren't going to win the next war. Quantum physics is. That sounds horrifying. <laughs> a, a very wealthy group of individuals um, have offered to pay me a very large sum of money if, if I attend their next private soiree. And they, they don't want to talk or anything like that. They, um, they want a practical demonstration. They'll pay me one million pounds if I can successfully survive six rounds of Russian roulette. Now, I am worried because of what Dr. Decker said, but, uh, well, I can't help but thinking that... Uh, nope, stakes are nope, so you high, can't do can't it. Sorry, lose. you can't do it because you're worrying about Dr. Decker. What do you think, Doctor? Should I take them up on their offer? No, of course not. No. No, I suppose you're right. In a darker timeline, you probably said yes, and I'm dead now. Yeah. I earn good money where I work. How do I stop losing it? Stop gambling. <laughs> I take your point. I take your point. But I suppose to uh, decide whether to continue gambling or to stop gambling is a gamble within itself, isn't it? That sounds like what a well, person addicted to gambling would my say. My time is up. <laughs> um, will we be having another session or... No, no. Don't answer that. It'll turn you into a gambler like me. Infectious. Isn't it? Ooh, said part of the title of the game right there. Boyo. All right, I guess he just walked away. Um, I don't know. Do you know anything about quantum gambling? Like, what that guy was jab jabbering on about? Have you been taking notes? I don't... Hmm. Did Decker do home visits for any other patients? That's a good question. No, as far as I know, Mariana was the only patient that Dr. Decker did okay. home visits for. Only patient. Hmm, is there any other questions I have for anyone? Let's see if there's any quick questions. Hmm. Clues. Alright, hold on, let me turn on the lights. It's getting real dark up in here and I'm getting a little spooked. <laughs> Alright. Let's get on with it then. You can stop looking at me like that. You've made me do this. And don't try and escape. You're all tied up. What? Now tell me the truth. Is this a dream? Oh my gosh. Ugh, that's so creepy. Is this a dream? No? If I believe it's a dream, it is a dream, right? So let's say it's a dream. That's a good doctor. Yes, it's all a big dream. So let's get down to business. Oh gosh. Do you believe that people can have kinetic powers? Do I believe people? I mean, I'm dreaming, so yes. <laughs> I feel like this is a big question. We're gonna say yes, sure. And how do we treat people with kinetic powers? Do we encourage them or do we discourage them? Encourage. Oh, doctor. I know, you said that how before. 
I feel like that's what I've been doing. Already, I know, girl. Encouraging them to use their power just makes them worse. That's what Dr. Decker did. Look at him now. That's true. I thought you were different. Oh, I thought we'd get on, but I'm wrong. Oh, gosh. Enjoy your sleep, Doctor. All right. There's someone else in my hour. I brought David back to life. I removed the chains, dressed her. It was Iris. We could try shifting now. Would you like to see David, Doctor? <sighs> Sorry. We both read The Cult of the Kinetic Mind, and that broke. It's no coincidence that most psychokinetic patients are grateful if you could see your way to declaring me insane, or at least temporarily insane. There was no flame. And then there was. I'll kiss a guy. I pretended like the hypnosis had worked. And then he just follows me. Can we maybe not talk about Hannah anymore? Wherever I go. You may just still pull out in front of the driver. Act four, dreams. There's the paintings. Morning, Doctor. You're looking a bit unwell. Are they getting you all wound up? Oh gosh, yeah. that's what happened Have to Dr. Decker too. I found it in Dropbox. I'm afraid I'm gonna get murdered. Dr. Decker lent Mariana some money. Sounds dodgy, doesn't it? I also got the toxicology report back from Officer Yates and shocker, Dr. Decker had, sorry. You just have to read it. I should have spoiler alert tattooed on my forehead. And can we not do the grief counselling thing today? I'm all sorts of behind on work and I'm getting more stressed out watching it all pile up. If you need anything though, I'm here. Hmm. I'm curious if Claire actually brought her husband today. What dream was that? Jaya thinks I should tell all the patients I can stop their problems. Perhaps I should avoid her till later. Interesting. Okay, let's look at all the things. Loan agreement. Loan amount, 15,000 pounds. Arrangement fee, one pound. Interest amount, zero percent. Wow, 36 months. By signing this agreement, the borrower agrees to accept the sum of the loan amount and to repay the loan amount in full within the terms stated. No interest. The lender also agrees to consider the loan repaid in full should they die. You know, that sounds really suspicious, Mariana, and I already don't I already don't like her. Scarlet with two T's? Wait, why are you why are you saying Scarlet right now? Should I mention that to Mariana? Linda also agrees to consider the loan repaid in full should they die. Oh, you think maybe Scarlet with two T's killed him? That's long. <gasps> oh my gosh, wait, she is? Oh my goodness. Heck yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm excited to meet her. I'm gonna save her for the end though. Okay, the lender also agrees to consider the loan repaid in full should they die or become subject to any power of attorney agreement as long as this event occurs within the term of the agreement. All right. Okay, so that makes Mariana like very suspicious. And she doesn't have much money, so that's weird. Um, ethanol positive. And then he was taking temazepam, which apparently all of his patients are taking temazepam as well. Can someone remind me what ethanol is? I'm probably going to have to look it up because I do not know. Hmm. Ethanol. Is that like, I know temazepam! <laughs> it's there again. Oh. Wait, ethanol, also called alcohol. Oh, okay. Oh, so it is like a type of alcohol. Or it is in alcohol. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. So he was drinking a little bit. Gotcha. I feel ya. Alright, Mariana, we're gonna just get right on into it. How are you today? I feel thirsty, doctor. And hot. Do you have any water? You're always, like, hot or cold. I've been drinking. Oh, a I lot said have water. water recently. Weird. 
I didn't go to the beach. I didn't go to the sea. I said I would, but I didn't. I've been feeling this way for a while. Alarm going off. It's like it's getting worse because I didn't go to the sea. It's like I'm having withdrawal or something. I don't feel. Oh wait, wait, wait. Was that part of it? Oops. I don't feel well. I feel sick most of the time, dizzy, thirsty. I got a head fog like you wouldn't believe. My doctor, Dr. Rose, sent me for blood tests. Dr. Rose? Dr. Rose thinks maybe I have a vitamin deficiency. I can tell she has no idea. She smiles, but she hasn't got any answers. I think I probably need to go back to the beach. See, doctor, it's calling me. That's really weird. That doesn't mean I. No. Don't. Hmm. And she's feeling hot. Hmm. Interesting. Do you take Tamazepam? What's Tamazepam? Why are you asking? Doesn't sound like she takes it. Okay, that's fine. Tamazepam was found in Decker's blood. I don't take sleeping pills. Never have done. When you suffer blackouts already, you don't really get offered anything like that. Yeah, that does make sense. Are you a mermaid? <laughs> Maybe she literally is. The sea's calling. This sounds crazy. But I can hear the sea. It's like oh my God. an alarm going off crazy. in my head. Just saying. Do you know where the sea is? From here? It's over there. Wherever I am, I know exactly where the sea is. It's like a compass. It's like a compass. You talk about the beach a lot. I have this recurring dream. About the light? I'm at the beach. I strip and walk into the sea. The sea feels warm and comforting. Not cold and harsh like you'd think. I swim down to the bottom of the ocean. I can breathe freely. I can breathe water. <laughs> Thank you, Oreo. I appreciate it. I am a pretty fast typer. On the typer. ocean floor ahead of me, there is... <laughs> Beautiful creature. A glowing being with wispy limbs. Shows her necklace. It's so warm. I'm transfixed. Mm. But my feet shift. That was definitely ain't a I'm Disney unsteady. movie. Below me, the floor is woven in human flesh. Dead bodies, but some of them still struggling for life. These are the ones touching me, gripping my feet. I scream. That's when I wake up. That sounds terrifying. Do you have that dream, Doctor? I'll just be straight up la or lying, laughing, oh my gosh. <laughs> I would be straight up lying if I if I said I have that dream too. <laughs> what, you're talking about hers? No, it's not that bad. <laughs> no, I don't have that it's dream. Horrific and beautiful at the same time. What's the glowing it's being? It's a dream, doctor. Stranger things happen in dreams. Has anyone else followed you? Do you forget anything from our sessions, Doctor? People follow me to the beach. I don't know who they are, and I don't know what happens to them. I don't always get followed, though, so it doesn't explain my blackouts.
Hmm. What happens to your followers? I said I don't know what happens to them. It's not always to the beach. Sometimes they follow me home. Well, we've, we've already been over this. My home is in Chantry. You know that. You rang my doorbell last night. What? I don't know. Why would I come to your house? I didn't kiss you, but you just followed me. Like the others. I don't feel comfortable here, Doctor. I'd like to leave. He lent me some money to start my business. It was a proper agreement. I remember signing things. He thought that a distraction would do me good. I don't think he expected me to trawl the beach for treasure <laughs> and sell it online. I am getting spooked. Oh, oh boy. Oh wait, I, I, I um, missed that last part. Hold he on. lent me some money to start my business. Yeah, I, I have a, a dog in my house. Agreement. I think I just heard him. <laughs> I remember signing things. Oh no, you're getting a little freaked he out too. He thought that a distraction would do Oh, distraction. Good. It's in. I don't think he expected in, uh, me to so crawl the beach for treasure and sell it online. Oh, okay, gotcha. Distraction. The distraction's probably your jewelry making business, right? Dr. Decker thought I had too much time on my hands. You need so 15,000 pounds for that, though? He lent me 15,000, all in all. That's insane. What did you do with the money? Oh my. Mainly rent. Mm. Why are you asking? Girl, I'm asking you what you spent your money on besides rent. <laughs> Um, what's my notes? Dr. Decker's loan. I should take a look at the contract. Hmm. <laughs> Your girl scream. <laughs> uh, I usually only scream when I, um, when I'm playing, like, uh, when I die or something in a video game. But not when I'm, like, scared scared. I, like, I jump. I jump. I, I don't usually scream very loudly, though. <laughs> I just, like, kind of jump. What does the alarm sound like? I hear a sound like singing, calling me. Okay. It gets stronger when I face it, when I move towards it. That's how I know where the sea is. But when I don't go to the sea, I feel like the sound gets louder all the time. Hmm. I'm having trouble sleeping. Perhaps I need sleeping tablets after all. Nope. Ask me that. Hmm, okay. I can't really get anything, any information from the song. Maybe it's just like humming. But if she's a siren, why is she hearing singing? I've seen Dr. Decker drink, but not that much. Certainly not during our sessions. He had other things on his mind, I'm sure. You know, I never rang your doorbell. If you say so, it must have been your twin then. My twin? I don't know if I have a twin. Do you have a twin, Doctor? I know you don't. It was definitely you, wearing what you're wearing now. Weird. Very strange. Have you been dancing recently? No. There's been no dancing. I haven't been feeling that well, Doctor. He's the cute, sad-looking one, isn't he? He asked me out, and I said I'd let him know. Do you think I should go out with him? Um, should you go out with Nathan? Hmm, play matchmaker. Nathan is the one whose days keep repeating, and she blacks out on the beach. I don't know, sure. 
Okay, but if he goes missing, don't go looking at me. Great. Actually, now that I think about it, I can stop you having blackouts. Ooh. Let's do the referral it's letter a referral first. referral letter, doctor. Don't overthink it. A girl can't be too careful with everything that's been going on. I set up Nathan and Mariana together. I hope nothing bad happens to Nathan. I'm gonna be real sad. <laughs> you said it with such a serious look on your face, I almost believed you. It would be good if you had some kind of superpower that helped me. But I don't think so. Perhaps you should ask someone else a question. Hmm. Oh, I have a superpower! <laughs> yes! Wow. Are you trying to scare me? Oh no, I feel bad now. <laughs> I'm not sure that's a good idea, Doctor. <laughs> I'm a keyboard warrior over here. Don't worry, I can help you. I can help you. I know not. Um. I don't know, I learned about quantum physics. I don't know. Hmm. Okay, Claire. Did you really bring your husband in? How are you There's today? no lake house today, sorry. David's not doing very well. He's caused the problem with the girl. I need to do something. Oh, what, what happened with the girl? The little girl, our neighbor at the lake house. She says David is weird and creepy. Doctor! <laughs> oh my god! Sorry. Oh. <laughs> but I found some of the referral letters we were talking about. There is oh. a pattern, but it's not the same for everyone. Why? He said to get them to you after he goes. Can you not? I hate you so much, Jaya. Oh. Oh, I have like tears in my eyes. Oh, please. Can you not? <laughs> oh. oh Jaya, why? Why why do you have to go around creeping like that? <laughs> Slithering around. Oh my gosh. Oh, ooh, my heartbeat's really going after that one. <laughs> oh. oh man. Screw that man. All right, dear Dr. Decker, I refer a client to your clinic for evaluation. Claire, she's being charged with the murder of her husband. We require your diagnosis as to whether she was sound of mind and had the means, had the mens rea required for the crime. Okay, that makes sense for Claire. Dr. Decker, I believe that our client has only given us her first name, Mariana. And is mentally unstable would like your expert opinion on the matter. We are happy to cover all your costs and look forward to receiving your report cover all of your costs so it sounds like who are these people chart token solicitors look at that name missers m s s r s hackett brown it's a strange first name for the attention of dr decker i'm referring you to yet another client for you today for further psychiatric evaluation, it is my hope that you concur with my suspicions are able to find him insane under the guidelines set out within the McNaughton rules. Hmm. It's not specific with this one. You got the clip. Oh my gosh. I was just thinking about getting the clip too. <laughs> Thanks, Aria. You got you got my back. I'll probably get scared just watching it over. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, it also should appear in my clips as well in a little bit on my uh, Twitch page. <laughs> okay. Scarlet. I want to get to know Scarlet. Scarlet with two T's. Apparently, like, Dr. Decker was interested in Scarlet, right? That's what Mariana said. Who are you? Scarlet. I haven't been in since he died. Since Dr. Decker died. Oh, I'm glad you elaborated. Um, what were you doing on Valentine's, Valentine's Day? Valentine's Day was awful. I had 
a bit of an accident with a creme brulee torch and had to spend the night waiting in A&E. I melted a nail to my finger. Oh. It hurts. hurt a lot. I needed stitches. It's all fine now, though. He was a complicated man, as I suppose most people are. His external persona didn't match what he dreamed about. What does that mean? What did Dr. His Director dream were about? amazing. Filled with a spectrum of colors and creatures. It was like Narnia for grown-ups. That was in the beginning. Oh my gosh, I have no idea what Jaya even said to me because I was so freaked out. <laughs> what did Jaya even say? Girl, I'm, I'm definitely gonna have to look at the... <laughs> Jaya is just crazy, man. I'm gonna have to look, look and see what she said. Yeah, it's not in here. Okay, how do you know what his dreams look like? I'm a dreamwalker. Oh, of I course. can visit people and help them in their dreams. Oh, you're like the lady from the beginning. You're not caught up on all his old patient shit, then. Old patients. Sorry. No. What a, what a close-up. <laughs> oh, she gave me the- thank you, thank you. <laughs> Fluid. Now I remember. Soft. Intricate things. I couldn't draw a picture if you asked. But they drew you to them. They looked a little strange, but you felt compelled to watch them. No. I really... Hmm. Try again. How did Dr. Decker's dreams change Chaotic, at the end? Chaotic. Dark. Like an earthquake, everything you stood on shifted into something else. I think he was fighting with something internally. And it was winning. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I can get the clip later on. What is that? Like four hours and fifty sec or fifty minutes? Holy crud! I've been playing this game for a long time. What was Doctor Decker fighting? We're gonna end the stream soon here. <laughs> I just got. So I've been so immersed by this game that five hours has felt like nothing. I don't know. It's a turn of freights. Inner demons. Insanity. I don't know. I can visit dreams, but I can't force the dreamer to interact with me. How do you dream walk? It's something I've been able to do since I was little. I was born an identical twin, and my sister and I shared dreams. We just thought it was normal. Oh yeah, I definitely can't do this all in one sitting. I'll go crazy. <laughs> I just need to know the person. A little. And know they're dreaming. Then I can sort of jump into them. It's something, I think, in my mind. Firstly, I need to sleep myself. I'm constantly tired, so I can pretty much sleep on demand. Before I go, I think of jumping into that person. That's how it works for me. I've tried teaching others, but I don't know if anyone else can do it. That's not... Hmm. I don't know. Lots of people. Whenever I get close enough to tell somebody about it, the first thing they want to do is try it out or have me visit their dreams. That's kind of why I'm here. Relationships. It's difficult to sustain them. I'm not just talking about romantic entanglements. Mm. 
these hard-keeping friends too. Like I said before, I tell them about my ability and they immediately what want to try it after out. after that? The problem is, I don't normally like what I see. Pass. Why don't you like what you I see? people try to show off. Firstly, they're a bit shocked if I turn up in their dream. But when they're comfortable with that, they start to put on a show. Well, I mean, that makes sense, I guess, right? But most people can't control their dreams. Oh. So they tend to turn into nightmares. Oh, I feel you. Quickly. Okay. Oh, look. I'm dreaming of a giant Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. Oh, why is it destroying New York? Hmm. Yeah, some a lot of patients go in and out. My standard patients are Nathan, Mariana, Aline, um, Claire, and Bryce. But there's like one or two patients that go in and out like every couple of days. Hmm. That's really weird that she says that dream thing because I, I always have dreams. And um, I a lot of the time I do know it's a dream. I'm very like cognizant cognitive when I'm having a dream because I, I pinch myself. When I get scared, I also sometimes pinch myself. Um, not when a jump scares happen or anything, but if I'm like in a dark room or something or if like I'm trying to find a light or something, I'm going to pinch myself. It's kind of just something I do instinctively and I also trained myself so I could know when I'm in a dream and when I'm not. Anyways, I can do that sometimes. Not so much as I've gotten older, but when I was little, I would always have dreams. I'll pinch myself, know it's a dream, and then I'll try to control it, but I could never control my dreams, even though I knew it was a dream. Um, and like, I would look up it up online, but a lot of people said it was like easy to control your dreams if you already knew it was a dream. That would be like the first big step is you knowing it's a dream and then boom, suddenly you can just control your dreams. But I never got to that point. Um, maybe once, but a lot of the times they just go off the rails and that would suck. And a lot of the times it would turn into nightmares like what she's saying here. So I think that's interesting. When you've experienced someone's dream. You've been in a sleep coma before? If oh my goodness. Been a bit creepy in it. What does that even feel like? Is that just like a passage me. of time? It's hard to look someone in the eyes after that. It's embarrassing. What should I do, Doctor? Wait, why is she embarrassed? Should I not tell people about my ability? Keep it a secret, bottle it up. What? What's her issue? She's like embarrassed that people have nightmares? Well, dreams are like the corners of your mind, right? So... I mean, keep it a secret I'm not then. sure that's healthy. But... I guess I could give it to try. What if it accidentally comes out? Is there anything else I can do to stop pushing people away? Sounds like you're only pushing people away. Refuse to dreamwalk, be honest, except they're just dreams. Except they're just dreams. It's difficult to do when you experience yeah. them like I do. But I know what you're saying is right. A lot of the time I assume people are controlling their dreams like I can. But they're probably directed by their subconscious and... Who controls that? Double honest. Interesting. I suppose I haven't really tried that. I might just give that a go. So, if I could breathe through my ears, you wouldn't want to see it. I do say no. A lot. But I usually cave eventually. Hmm. Oh, man. You try to wake up, but you can't? Hmm. I've had something like that before, where I was stuck in a room and I knew I was dreaming, so I was trying to wake my up, myself up, so I was just, like, hitting my head against a wall. Like, literally. <laughs> Not figuratively. And then, um... This, this is gonna be kind of, um... Maybe TMI or whatever. But the only way I, I left the room 
And then like I got shot or something in the night. I, I died in the dream, so I woke up. So for a long time, I couldn't leave nightmares unless I got like killed in the nightmare. As, as you know, as weird as that sounds. That's why I like hated dreaming for a while because I would always have nightmares. Sometimes I have nightmares when I get stressed out. Not so much anymore though, which is which is good. Usually I just dream about dumb stuff like uh, missing school or something, or like sleeping in and I'm the teacher. <laughs> those are this are some classic dreams. I prefer those nightmares over the nightmares I had like when I was a kid. It's why I couldn't watch horror movies is because I just like dream about it. So also why I ended up being such a like a scared person. I I can't handle jump scares. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I would always like have issues with like dreaming and stuff. It was like a big deal like when I was in high school He's dead. Were you now. dating Decker? So I suppose it won't affect him if I admit to that So yes I was okay. Well, I already knew you were dating Decker because he wasn't not dating Mariana Andrew. Not when his dreams started changing Like I said my ability ruins relationships who told you Jaya just thought she'd know thought she'd know everything about her precious Dr. Decker sorry oh wow we didn't speak that much but she was a lot like the other woman so much control over someone who was supposed to be her superior. Sorry. Huh. Weird. I don't know, Doctor. Do you? Control over Decker. I don't know about... Control. I don't... Man. Okay. I was just trying to follow up with that lead. Am I going to have nightmares about this game? No, I should be fine. I haven't had nightmares in a long time. <laughs> Plus, if I do something, if I do something before, like an hour or two before I go to bed, I'm usually all right. Oh, I've had that before where I wake up temporarily after waking up from a dream, but it's still night. So I go back to sleep and I'm like right back in it. I feel you, Aurea. I've definitely had that before. Who is Glenn? Who are you? Uh, sorry, uh, I'm Glenn. Sitting on my couch? Uh, I didn't expect to be here. I was looking for the men's room. What the heck? Uh, that's weird. Like I said, I was in the green room. You know that new restaurant in town. Uh, he I actually need to do something. Does he uh, say he like teleports or something? What is he doing? Done. Sorry. Um, I was in the middle of the day and needed the restroom, and here I am. Sorry. Sorry, you're not familiar with my case. I stepped through the restroom door into your office. Sometimes when I go through a door, Ooh, double it image. opens to another place. Ah, oh, okay. Did Jaya no, see you? I shouldn't imagine she did that. I didn't even pass through the waiting room. Besides, it's lunchtime. She won't be there. Oh. Wait. Talk about Glenn. Sorry, I... It must be frustrating. Always asking and getting nowhere. It is frustrating. All right. You know Jaya's no, lunch not schedule? Really. But it's lunchtime, and you don't normally see patients now. Well, Dr. Decker didn't normally see patients now. Dr. Decker was crazy. I arrived late to the party. Uh, apparently, he was a fine, upstanding citizen before. I don't know what changed him. Of the few sessions I had with him, he'd observed me walking through doors. But I'd walk through a door and I'd disappear. And then I couldn't get back. The session was £150 either way, 
So I paid that for a couple of times and then decided it was a bad idea. <laughs> and you just walk out of the session. As you can see, it's still happening. Oh. Hmm. The doors. I'm still vanishing from one place to another. That's so strange. Hmm. What's causing your problem? Died. He was on his deathbed and I was complaining about work, women or whatever. It was Nidium. He said, when one door closes, another opens. Then he died. I needed those words to be important. So here I am. So now they are important because you thought it into existence, just like the secret. All right, tell me about your dad. He was stoic. He had tuberculosis in his lungs. That's what killed him. Nobody knew until the end. I never got to say I loved him. Yeah. You regret maybe. not saying you loved him? Maybe. He'd split with my mum three years earlier. It was messy. It was bad. I didn't talk to him really at all. They called me as next of kin, said I should come in if I wanted to say goodbye. I did love him. He just broke everything. No. I hadn't seen him for so long. Just let it all out. I, I screamed. I shouted. I punched the walls. Hmm. Do you know what he said? I don't know. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. I just want to ask him about his anger. What did your dad Sorry. say? Over and over again. Like he really meant it. He did. He really meant it. When I stopped, when I was exhausted, he smiled at me. Like, like he cherished me. Aww. Like he'd been waiting to say sorry. Waiting for forgiveness. I didn't get to. I didn't get to say I loved him. I didn't get to forgive him. He just said when one door closes, another opens. And he died. What does he think of me? All those years, thinking I was the bigger man. And it turns out he was. There's no going back, is there, Doctor? When one door closes, it's shut forever. Hmm. Yes, the door is shut forever. No, the door is not shut forever. Hmm. I'm gonna say no. How? How do I go back? Just open a door back? Travel back in time? Try to forgive I yourself. Think you're right. I've been trying to address the symptoms and not the root of the problem. <laughs> you might be the best replacement doctor this yes, place has seen. Yes, that's the first time anyone's ever said that to me since I started. Time, and you can help me with this. Yeah. Thanks, doctor. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Wait, is that a possibility for all the other temporary patients that come in? <laughs> and I just messed them up horribly? Heck yeah, Glenn. Heck yeah, I got you, man. I don't want to say the other stuff. That's dumb. <laughs> yeah, heck yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm proud of myself. That someone actually called me a good doctor. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. The game told You're me to ask. You're asking me for proof. <laughs> She's definitely not coming back. How can I do that? Get into your head, into your dreams. We don't have any real 
relationship yet, Doctor. But you are growing on me. Oh. Let's not break that just yet. Growing on me? Question mark? Sounds familiar. Oh, okay. <laughs> Alright. Mariana. How's Nathan doing? How are you doing, bud? How are you? I'm feeling good. I ran into one of your other patients. Marianne. You guys are gonna start dating now. She's beautiful. I think we might go on a date. Don't let her kiss you. No, I'm just kidding. Ah. Alright, have a look at the talk. is the same report. sleeping pill Dr. Decker prescribed me. Mm hmm Why would he mix those with alcohol? People are such idiots. Which reminds me, a truck driver died. Which truck driver? The truck driver that ran into Hannah. Oh. He's divorced, apparently. He killed himself. He makes sleeping pills with alcohol, too. But he died in his garage. Huh, weird. How did he die in his garage? I read it in the paper. He'd been drinking. Then he took the sleeping pills. Then he went into his garage and put the hose pipe through his window. Not until he put his daughter in the seat first. Oh. Did the daughter die It's as one well? of those newspaper stories you read, and you hope it says he leaves behind his wife and seven-year-old daughter. But his daughter is in the car. Do you know I wrote him a letter? Tell me about the letter. Dr. Decker told me one of the ways to get through my grief would be to write a letter to the truck driver. I tried to forgive him, I know it's my fault, but the thing that made me feel best was blaming him. Oh, okay. I think maybe I he knew killed that himself was gonna because be the of me. Oh no. Do you think I'm to blame, Doctor? Oh no. <laughs> Ooh, I'm gonna check my notes and not look at you straight in the eye. I should tell Glenn to stop feeling guilty or tell him to just open a door and go back to the room where his dad was, or go back in time if that helps him deal with it. Nope. Stop feeling guilty. That's what I did. Okay. <sighs> Is it my fault? Yes. No. No. His daughter's picture is in the paper. Molly. Ever since I saw a picture in the paper, I have started thinking I could see her. Out of the corner of my eye. Like she's watching me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Crazy, right? I can't. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, I'm, <laughs> I'm getting real spooked here, guys. You know, ghost girl, I'm starting to think I should play this during the day, the daytime, because the sun is down and I am officially dang spooked. And I hate it when I look out of the corner of my eye and sometimes you think that you see like a shadow or something. My goodness. Freaky, freaky stuff. Nope. <laughs> All right, I'm going to end it right here. Oh my gosh. Okay, I hate when Jaya pops up, but I also hate when spooky little girls appear next to the character that's actually speaking. That is terrible as well. <laughs> Alright, overall prog is 70%. We are very close to finishing the game, but I'm going to finish it at another time. <laughs> no, you're fine, Kaiden. It's absolutely fine. Um, search is made, 941. Holy crud. Doctor, you don't give up easily. You're understanding them. Oh, nice. Hints used. 565. Have I used that many hints? <laughs> oh, there's this 565 times um, 80 seconds. That's probably it. Uh, yes. Um, if I'm going to stream tomorrow, I think I will. Um, I'm pretty sure I will, but I can't promise anything. Um, if I do stream this this particular game, though, it's going to have to be during the day. Because <laughs> I get scared. I am scared right now. But don't worry. I'll watch some videos, some YouTube videos, to get my mind off of it. Um, but yeah, I'll try to stream some tomorrow, but we'll see. We'll see what I end up doing. Um, anyways, this game's really good so far. I think everybody's... The best um, compliment I can give this game is that everybody's acting seems pretty... Seems pretty good. They haven't done anything, like, unbelievable or, like, anything that breaks, like, what's it called? 
breaks the reality of the game quite yet. So that's how I've been able to play for like almost five and a half hours straight, which is very well done, um, in my opinion, for a game to be able to make me play for five and a half hours and making me think I've only been playing for two. I think that is like a quality of a very good game. And it's also something that I might be thinking about a little bit after, like the whole Cthulhu thing and seeing how that goes into everything and just like the relationships between characters and stuff like that, I think is really interesting. Like I said before, I don't like um, watching horror stuff. I'm very jumpy, but I do enjoy the psychology of things, like why people do certain things. That's why I listen to true crime podcasts, even though I get super freaked out. It's just, I like listening to people like analyze like the person's childhood and then everybody related to it. It's kind of like a puzzle in a way. And I appreciate it in that aspect. Um, but the jumpy stuff, I don't appreciate at all. I don't like the girl in the corner of the screen. Freaks me out. <laughs> Anyways, there's probably going to be a couple more of those little jump jump things, especially by Jaya. I swear, she's probably going to do it at least one more time at the last 30% of the game. <laughs> I, I can almost promise you that. Um, anyways, I'm going to call it night here. I'm going to watch some YouTube and then get settled in for bed. Maybe eat some dinner because it's been a while since I've, since I've eaten. <laughs> so, anyways... I thank you guys so much for watching now or in the future. I appreciate so, so much for all your support. It's been super fun playing and trying to solve the mystery with you guys. And I like it when you guys tell me like what phrases I should um, type in as well. Because sometimes I, you guys have different lines of thought than I do, obviously. So it's good to have multiple brains thinking about the same, you know, the same kind of case. That's always the best, even in real true crime cases as well. Anyways, I'm rambling, so I'm going to call it a night. <laughs> Have a great one, Kaiden and Oreo. Thank you for stopping by. I appreciate it a lot. All right. <laughs> Have a great night. Bye-bye. <laughs>